Alright ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're all doing well and welcome to our mini faction war. So today how it's going to be going down is we are going to have four players playing, each of whom is going to be representing a faction. So playing Grand Cathay is going to be Professor Pwn, Hadris is going to be representing the forces of uh, Kislev. I'll be playing the Changer, so I've taken the Mantle of Chaos and am going to be playing Zinch. And then lastly, we have Subutai on the Beastmen. So all of the DLC factions, plus a faction that basically is getting a DLC as well in the Beastmen, are going to be playing it out. So the format for today's tournament is going to be a round robin. So every person will be playing every other person in the pod, essentially. So me as Zinch will be playing Cathay, Kislev, and Beastmen. And after everybody has played everybody, we're going to be taking a look at the records of all the players. And whoever has the strongest record at the end of all the matches is going to be the winner of today's faction war. So that is the breakdown of how that goes. And in the very narrow event that there is like a tie, for example, uh, we would actually decide. We all agreed that if there was a tie, we would decide the uh, the grand finals via a uh, FFA match. So we would have like a traditional old school FFA match with all the schemes, all the memes and all that sort of good stuff. So that's pretty much the jam. That is pretty much the jam indeed. So what also we'll be doing, we're going to be focusing on the faction war, but a little bit at the end of the stream, once we kind of uh, finish everything and go through all the matches, uh, I'm down to go over units and look at things, but I was planning on doing a separate stream for that tomorrow where we just like break down everything in like super, super uh, heavy duty depth. So yeah, Beastmen got Zangors and they also got the Elemental Incarnate that Kislev have, which is crazy strong. Crazy strong indeed. So uh, so yeah, that's going to be it. Now you're hoping for a tie. <laughs> you want the old tie, eh? All right, well, we're going to be loading into the first match of the day, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for joining. Dude, the Elemental Incarnate is amazing. It has a Mortis Engine. It's not like a super jacked Mortis Engine, but it's the same as the Fane Chantress. And it's a pretty good fighter itself. It's a great monster. A little bit squishy, but overall it uh, gets the job done. So we're going to be loading into the first match of today, ladies and gentlemen. And these are going to be done via replays just to prevent lag and make it nice and smooth and all that sort of good stuff. But here we go. This is the first match and it is going to be... should be appearing on screen any second now. Come on, baby. I know you can do it. There it is. All right. Power of technology. So, spawning on the north side of the map, it is going to be myself on Zinch. And unfortunately, guys, the changeling is just not well designed for multiplayer. It's actually pretty... Uh, Pretty poor for multiplayer, which is unfortunate. But the thing about the changeling is it costs the same amount of gold no matter what. So like, so the cheapest you can get the changeling is 3,500. So I'm just gonna lay this down to you guys before we go today so you can understand why I'm not picking the changeling in most games is because he's just not really playable. If you take away all his spells and abilities, he costs 3,500 base from a 5,000 standard full kit cost. And then it, no, if you want to change into Belagar, for example, it costs 3,500 gold. He's very, very poorly designed for multiplayer, unfortunately. So um, hopefully it's something that'll get fixed in the future based on some feedback. I have a whole separate video about the Changeling that's going to be going down tonight, but you're not going to be seeing him too much. Uh, maybe maybe in a game here today, but nonetheless, I'm going to be commanding the forces of Zeech. Yeah, Changeling Kugath is good, but Chang Kugath is terrible against Grand Cathay, and he's also terrible against Kislev and not very good against Beastman either. Um, you know, the Ungor Raiders and stuff. So yeah, it's it's Trixie Hobbitses. Now, I have Cairo's Fate Weaver, I think. No, in this game, we go for the Exalted Lord of Metal, which is pretty good against Grand Cathay. Searing Doom is nice. Foundal Transmutation can nuke those blobs and get the job done. For my main battle line, it's going to be the new Zangor. Zangors are an insanely good unit. Uh, they have great combat stats at 40 and 30, charge bonus. They also have scaling stats. So as you fight in combat, these bad boys can get up to... Well, not in combat, but as you fight in the game, they can get up to 20% base damage, which is really, really powerful. And all it takes for them to get this is casting spells for both you and your opponent. So as you and your opponent are casting spells, over the course of a game at Zangor, usually it's going to max out and get their 20% base damage, unless you're playing against like Korn or something. But yeah, they're um, they're very, very good. So Zangors, Zangors, and more Zangors in the bushes. They have Vanguard deployment too, and they only cost 700 gold, which is an absolute steal. On the far side, we have a couple of Chaos Warriors with Halberds. And if you're wondering wondering why I didn't go with Aeacold Hellbrass in this matchup, it's because Yuan Bo is like the punisher of, of like Footlords. If you get in and try and fight against Yuan Bo, you're going to get dunked on pretty hard. So this man doesn't mess around. He has access to Nets, Talons of the Night, as well as the Jade Shield. All are pretty good. And essentially what you do with him is you net down enemy heroes and you get your Goon Squad, you take him down, and then you pop the Sweet Execute to the Emperor's Executioner. It basically just does a massive chunk of damage over the course of two seconds. And uh, from there, you know, karate chops. It doesn't always kill the target. Like bigger targets can survive it, but smaller targets and lords usually don't. So they can pay the troll toll there. 
And he's got the armor of the dragon's gaze. For the rest of the Cathay army, it is going to be Celestial Dragon Guard. Felix is going to be backing up Yuan Bo. And this guy, we have a Sky Lantern to provide a little bit of harmony and support. Jade Warrior Halberds and an Iron Hail Gunner in reserve. So very fun stuff. Yeah, Beastmen front lines are a whole different game now, guys. A whole different game. Like, Beastmen are going to be really strong in this upcoming meta because now they have an armored, durable front line, which is very, very nasty. So uh, there's going to be live play tomorrow, Igor. These are all done via replays today just to make sure it's like smooth and we can get through the games at an expeditious rate. So Zangor is taking a little bit of focus fire from the Sky Lantern here, and my bird is lurking up in the sky, the Exalted Lord of Change. Cathay is one of those factions that you don't want to take head on. Typically split pushing them and pressing side points and trying to force them to maneuver is the way that you really, really trade into them. So, um, so yeah, it gets the uh, it gets the job done. So Zangor is moving up, getting ready to bump and grind, heading on in, and uh, now we're going to move around because obviously I saw you on bow. I also saw you know Felix over here, the Celestial Dragon Guard, these very elite units, and Celestial Dragon Guard will beat Zangor's as well. So what we're going to be doing is making our way towards objective number three right now. You can already see some of my Zangors with their pretty fast movement speed at 40 are going to be colliding with the Peasant Long Spearmen on the back objective. So here they come. They're going to be bashing, getting in there, and uh, hopefully doing some work as we do some of the Portal Glyph. So our Zeech bird up in the sky is going to be dropping some summons here, and those birds are going to be coming out to party and jump on Cathay's backfield. But Zangors are just so good. I'm telling you guys, you're going to enjoy yourselves. And yes, the Mutalith Vortex piece is also going to be a staple in a ton of matchups. It's really, really good. And uh, it, it's on the Warriors of Chaos and Zinch roster. So this is one of my forbidden tech pieces against the uh, the Crowmen. So we see the Crowmen come in. Crowmen are a really good unit. These are the Empress's Crowmen. These are the ROR's, right? So amazing combat stats, good crowd clearing. They give Cathay an ability to dive backfields as well as defend their own field. And I did see the bombardment coming. So the Empress's Crowmen have something called the Nangal Grenades which is super powerful. And you'll be seeing that used a lot in the meta. It's very, very good. So it looks like he was setting up a bombardment there. So I do dodge it. I pull my Zangors back. The Crowmen going to be following. But now the Doom Knights are coming in, the Knights of Immolation, which I knew he was going to go Crowmen. And a nice bombard right there does take my Zangor shields down and also brings them down to about 70%. But now the Doom Knights should be able to get the job done. They're going to be doing battle with the Crowmen. The Crowmen do not have good armor piercing. So they're going to be having a pretty unfortunate night versus these bad boys. And you can see them getting dragged down. But more Crowmen being called in for Grand Cathay as Yuan Bo is on his way over to try and help out. Flooding my opponent's back objective, trying to get the capture weight. But the Exalted Lord of Change and company able to fend off the Crowmen here. Obviously, the 120 armor on these bad boys is going to be uh, pretty darn good. So now Yuan Bo looks like he's going to be going Dragon Form, most likely to try and help out up in the sky. So the Jade Dragon transforms and is getting ready to party with my forces up in the air. Initial value trading is pretty good. Uh, we haven't engaged over here. We just have Zangors kind of chilling out. Screamers being called in from reserve and in the bushes, Zangors are going to be emerging. I actually went up and through the trees all the way around and outflanked the Cathay army. So now we're going to be pushing into the backfield while here our Exalted Lord of Change is going to be dropping a little bit of a bombardment right there. So there it goes. And those are some uh, big shots. Certainly a very powerful ability. Screamer's on the way in, and uh, as far as the objective goes, we're doing pretty good. Zangors will outtrade Jade Warriors. It just takes a long time. Chaos Warriors with Halberds obviously will do well too. Screamers have engaged against Yuan Bo, and uh, their anti-large attacks will be very, very good for sure. Be able to punch through the, uh, the big dragon pretty effectively, I would say. And now you guys are going to be seeing the most dreaded unit of all. The Cockatrice is going to be coming in very, very soon. Nice shots from the Iron Hail Gunners. That one hurt bad. Uh, you know, he really, really pounded my Screamers of Zinch. Those guys got melted. But we're going to be able to compromise the backfield here. Knights of Immolation getting ready to surf in there. And the Zangors are also on their way as well. And yes, if you guys have questions, just hit me up in between games. I'll take little breaks in between matches to answer any questions. And I can show stuff and whatever. All that good stuff here. So we do shut down the backfield up in the sky. Uh, Yuan Bo's doing pretty good. Um, the Screamers here are pretty close to crumbling. But now we're calling in the new Dread Beast. So this is one of the new SEs for Zinch. It's a niche piece, but if you're looking to win Air Force fights, it's pretty good. It has solid armor piercing values. You can see that's a really good amount. 295 out of 420, 46 with poison, and it does also lower nearby stats. So this bad boy lowers melee attack by 10 and speed by 10 and a radius. And uh, I believe it does cause terror as well. So certainly not terrible. So that is going to be the cockatrice. I know. Uh, I Dude, don't don't even get me started on that, Hadris. Don't get me started on that. So here Yuan Bo's going to be hunting down the chicken. Looking to chase with the Doom Knights as well as these Screamers. I've got a pretty nasty Air Force. Grand Cathay does call in the Righteous Lances of Wei Jin. So it looks like we're preparing for a giant Air Force duel. Both sides are going to be gathering up and the Duel of Fates is upon us. So Doom Knights engaging. Cool Air Force battle for sure. Righteous Lances and Yuan Bo getting ready to battle. But the Cockatrice is here. And that bad boy is going to be dropping a melee attack debuff. And I do also have Final Chance Mutations. We're going to be nailing this entire blob with some big, big scary metal magic. And the time is now. Do the Beastmen get the... I don't think they get the Cockatrice. I don't think they do. 
do not think they do. But even still, the final transmutation making a big difference. Crow men coming in. The Zinch's Air Force is very, very scary. It kind of always has been. The Exalted Lord of Change is quite, quite a good fighter. And having this new big SE bird up in the sky is certainly going to be quite helpful as the Righteous Lances of Wei Jin are basically a counter against Knights of Immolation. But the Screamers and the Bird and my own big chicken here are putting up a good fight. But I might be forced back here. It's going to be tough. Now, as far as the ground fighting goes, mostly Halberds versus Jade Warriors. Chaos Warriors with Halberds are still an awesome unit. And it's really cool how both Zangors and Chaos Warriors fulfill their roles. The Zangors is a little bit of a more of a shock piece. They get to the battlefield faster, but the Chaos Warriors give you that super heavily armored sustainability and grinding power, and they can uh, definitely do it. So Yuan Bo fighting it out here. Onyx Crowmen pouring in as the Knights of Immolation and company continue duking it out in the pits. And it looks like the Air Force of Zinch is going to be able to probably pull this one out. The Crowmen are good against, you know, my light stuff, but they're not going to be excellent against the big targets. And uh, yeah, the bird is debuffing on the melee attack of all these units, which is actually really substantial when you take into account the scope of that Air Force battle. Zinch army ability going down on Yuan Bo there, and we are going to be dropping into their final transmutation, which is going to be extremely nasty. Yuan Bo does go human form and matrix matrixes some of those air attacks. He doesn't have any healing, unfortunately. Now, by the way, if you guys are Cathay fans, Cathay is going to be very, very strong in this patch. Uh, they have a couple of really good lore choices. Yuan Bo is insanely good, but also the Iron Dragon has a uh, ability that heals him to full health when he drops below 25%. So, I mean, there's been a lot of changes to Grand Cathay outside of just the DLC units that have made them better for sure, but... In this case, the Dreaded Cock is going to be hunting down old uh, Yuan Bo right here, and it looks like he is going to be running for the hills. He's broken, and now the battle lines are starting to change for the forces of the Changer. Marauders of Zinch moving in, Horsemen and Forsaken in reserve, still ignoring the other side. And one of the reasons why this battle is going, I would say, very well for me, just in an overall analysis, is that my opponent had two Celestial Dragon Guards sitting on this point, holding it for a long time. So my army was almost fully committed to this side, whereas he was kind of fighting without a couple thousand resources, which allowed me to out-trade on the ground. And obviously the Air Force fight went in our favor here. So um, here it comes. The Cockatrice is going to be hunting down Yuan Bo, sitting at a couple hundred HP. Felix Jaeger coming in, trying to provide a little bit of healing. His Peasant Horsemen do also intercept it right here. And yes, the battle does continue to rage on as in the back crane gunners being called in for Grand Cathay. Jade Warriors, got to be careful. Those crane gunners can put some big hurt down on my bird. And uh, yes, I can answer that question in chat real quick. Uh, yes, ground lights have been fixed and pump wagons, as far as I can tell, are fixed as well. And so are the Chaos Dwarf trains. So CA did actually follow through with fixing all of those. Uh, Forsaken, still chilling in reserve. Obviously a little bit of sloppy micro on my part, but the Cockatrice is going to be causing some terror. Nice shots from that crane gunner. I really wanted to come in and finish off Yuan Bo. Couldn't quite get back there, but we're going to be dropping another final transmutation here, trying to penalize the army. Uh, some Chaos Warrior Halberds actually made it all the way back here. So that Zinch shot does hit him, doing some respectable damage. And now he gets tagged and uh, is going to be dropping very, very low in terms of his HP. On the backside, a couple of Halberds just holding here. Honestly, Zinch doesn't really have any infantry that can straight up just bully through them. So I decided to go for numbers. So we do have the Chaos Warriors of Zinch. There's going to be two of those bad boys on the way in, and they should be able to wrestle that point from the forces of Grand Cathay. So check this out. You see this icon above my bird's head that was there for a second? That was the execution icon that appears for Yuan Bo. When you're close to being executed, there's like a blue sword that appears above your head. And when you are in execution range, an orange sword appears above your head. But if he's broken, it doesn't go into play, basically. And right now he's broken and running and isn't getting the job done. So for now, the bird is going to have to pull back. Value has been evened from the sniping, but the pressure is starting to really, really mount here on Grand Cathay as the back objective has been captured. And here, the Chaos Warriors and Forsaken are going to be rotating around and looking to get a sweet, sweet charge into the back here. They're going to be flanking into the Celestial Dragon Guard. Here they come. And yeah, man, Grand Cathay, there's so many cool builds you can do with them now. Like, what's weird about Grand Cathay, and I, I do feel bad for, you know, campaign players of Grand Cathay because honestly, none of the units that Grand Cathay got are really any good in campaign at all. But for multiplayer, they certainly have a lot of applications because multiplayer is more about cost effectiveness. In campaign, you just want to get really powerful big SEs or monsters and just kind of like cheese and you know do all that kind of stuff. Um, Kissel have definitely got some good campaign units. I would say that the Elemental Incarnate can be doom stacked and it's going to be very, very scary for sure. But um, here we go in the back. The Cockatrice did actually take down Yuan Bo, but the Dreaded Cock here is going to be getting dragged down by all the Peasant Horsemen sitting at negative three leadership and uh, probably will be breaking and running off the map. But so far, the bird did pretty good. I mean, it got a thousand value. It debuffed it. It got the job done. I wasn't unhappy about that. Chaos Warriors and company overwhelming the Celestial Dragon Guard that are a little bit unsupported here. So they get the job done in that regard. A big bird flying around just trying to avoid death. The Birdman up in the sky, the Onyx Crowmen doing battle with Screamers. Now, a full health unit of Onyx Crowmen will dunk on a unit of Screamers. It's actually very cost-effective for Grand Cathay and really allows them to defend their backfield and be very disruptive. 
But Jade Warrior Halberd's moving up, and uh, yeah, that looks like it's going to be tough. We're going to get a triple cap on them here, and Grand Cathay is not a faction that's really good at taking back points. And because I respect you guys so much, I'm not going to pretend like there's still a game here. We will, of course, fast forward through this because we have the benefit of doing that with replays and all that. So in this case, Grand Cathay might be able to get this objective back and they're going to keep trickling in. But I have so many Chaos Warriors and Armor Troopers here. My Lord is still alive and cackling. The Crowmen, this was really funny. At the end of the game, I was in chat with Professor Pwn. And his Crowmen were hunting my bird. We got the Crow, the Crow on Crow battle. The Empress's Crowmen just Benny Hilling after my chicken here. And trying to slip away to the best of my abilities, but um, you know, the, the hunt is still on and it was pretty hilarious. So Pwn does pull a little bit of head and value from the backfield grinding, but my bird is still alive. He's still causing problems and uh, Forsaken now going to be heading in to reinforce that objective. And we're just getting closer and closer to the victory point as more Chrome are called in. But Grand Cathay is not a faction that's excellent at retaking objectives. And uh, ZG and Infantry are, are pretty tanky, especially with the new Zangors here. The Zangors do move into combat looking super cool. Although I do wish that CA had gone the extra mile here and had gone with the, um, and had gone with the, what's it called? Like the bird faces, you know? Cause Zangors and Tabletop have like blue skin, uh, and they also have like bird heads instead of like beast heads. I, I think that was a little bit unfortunate, you know, but it's, for me, I care more about the multiplayer experience, um, than the aesthetic, but the aesthetic is a close second for me. I really do like the way units look, but Screamers come in, take down the blimp. Zinch pushes the backfield, or Cathay pushes the backfield, but is immediately shut down. And that is going to be all she wrote in the first game of today's Faction War. So GG well played to Professor Pwn. And again, for anybody just joining, it is a round robin format. So each player will play each other faction, essentially, and uh, go from there. Yes, yes. I know a few beaks mixed in there would be cool. So looking at my army, Zangors are awesome. A thousand value, you know, not crazy value in the other ones, but they get there. They're high armored. They grind well. Uh, Big Bird at 2,500 was good. We had the Cockatrice come in, and he actually took out Yuan Bo in the end, which was nice. Knights of Immolation, really good for shutting down the Crow Men. So as far as this match goes, you guys got to see the old uh, Cockatrice here. You got to see the Zangors in action. Of course, Yuan Bo didn't get to get his fancy execute off, but I can assure you, um, he is very good, and Grand Cathay is going to be pretty strong indeed. It's very early on. You know, all of us are just learning, and uh, then, yeah, we're getting it. So... Going to the old bracket here, we're going to be updating the score. And right now, I am going to go to 1-0 and in this series. And old uh, Professor Pone is going to go to 0-1 for now, but I'm sure he'll be back for blood against his other opponents. And now we are going to be looking for our next matches here today. All right, so a little bit of question time. Uh, if you guys have any questions, just rapid fire those bad boys out and I will answer them. We'll do this for about one to two minutes, and then we will jump on to the next match. So faction with the biggest buff. Um, Kislev is the one that got the biggest buff. Kislev is going to be an S plus tier faction that is probably going to be just, you know, the strongest faction of the game. I think they'll have the highest win rate. Any new maps that CA added? Uh, I think they added one new map that isn't very good. So unfortunately, it's not. Uh, what's your hot take? Will faction 3.1 be... I think this patch is going to be more balanced than the previous patch because it fixed capture weight bugs on Tomb Kings. Uh, it fixed capture weight bugs for Chaos Dwarves. It fixed trains, pump wagons um a lot of other units like that it inadvertently buffed beastmen and warriors of chaos who are factions that needed buffs which i think is a very good step in the right direction so overall i'm pretty happy uh let's see is the changeling any good in multiplayer no the only time the changeling is going to be any viable at all in multiplayer is if people just turn him into kugath and matchups in which kugath is good and then you get a mutalith vortex beast and you get kugath and you get double mortis engine plus healing on the zinch roster my favorite new lord is going to be baba yaga she's super fun um, any news on quick battle maps? Unfortunately, no. Uh, what's Aeocold's purpose in multiplayer for Zinch? He's really good at grinding armored factions. If you're facing dwarves, you're facing Grand Cathay. Uh, now, Yuan Bo's a little scary, but he's really good at grinding against armored factions. He's really good against uh, Kissel too, because he has a shield and armored bonus for his infantry. He's basically just Sigvald, guys. He's basically just Sigvald. The changeling in PvP can only change to one lord. Yes, one lord, and he's stuck with that lord the entire game. Did CA give Beastmen Minos of Corn? No, they did not. Um, but the Beastmen have access to Zangors and the Elemental Incarnate. Um, is the Cockatrice a demon? No, it's a beast. So it just routes off the battlefield. Is the patch going to be good? I think it's going to be... It, it's it's not perfect, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. Um, all right. Do you think Blue Scribes buff range units in multiplayer too? The Blue Scribes in multiplayer are an absolute meme unit, but they're very fun to use. If you're looking to have fun, mess around, I think they're good. Uh, Mother of Stonky is good. She's niche because she's forced to be on a chariot mount, which means she can die to cannons and sniping, but in factions that don't have that, she's incredibly good. 
She's got Flock of Doom, cut a couple of their nice spells for sure. Do Beastmen still struggle with large SEs? Not really. They have Ungol Raider, Centigore Throwing Axes, and now they have the Elemental Incarnate and the Gorgon. You have some options. Is there anything obviously broken so far? You know what? That's something about this patch that I was a little bit surprised. There's nothing that is just like, oh my god, this is going to ruin the meta. But like Kislev just getting new stuff and already being a 55% win rate faction last season is going to put them over the edge, I think. Uh, do you think CA fixed enough problems for ladder to be fun? No, I don't. Because the ladder is still going to suck because the maps for ladder suck. Uh, they, they haven't added our total tavern maps. And yeah, the, the maps were are just awful for that. Did any demon units get buffed? Uh, not that I've noticed. No. Any buffs for Slanesh? Not that I've noticed. I don't think so. I think I don't think they should buff Slanesh or, or, or like, you may, Korn could maybe use a little bit, but Slanesh I wouldn't buff because when they get their DLC, if they get some good units, it'll bring them just to being perfectly balanced. You have to be careful of buffing factions that are still yet to get DLC. And thoughts on new anti-healing unit for Kislev? It's good to be nice against vampire counts. It has some nice applications and it's it's a good unit in general. Mommy, Mama Stank is, yeah, she's good. She's great. She's dropping the stanky leg all over people. Is the Ghost Bear exploding ability? It's it's decent. Um, all right. Changing, turning into other heroes in battle or change. Uh, I think you change right when the battle starts. Just want to say, hey, thank you. I really appreciate the kind words. Akshina Rangers are really, really good, Martin. They're super good. One of the Akshina Rangers actually has a net ability, which is nuts. Uh, is the Mutalith balanced? It's really good. The Mutalith Beast is going to be more nasty in land battle, but in Domination, Mortis Engines aren't as good. So that's the thing. Um, like if you're playing land battle and someone's just mouth breathing in a box, you know, oftentimes land battles do devolve into box fights because you don't have to fight for objectives. Uh, the Mutalith Beast could be very toxic, but in Dom, it is 2,000 gold. So it's like 600 gold more than a Vampire Count Mortis. Um, but it is an anti-large monster too. I thought it was going to be OP, but in my games, it hasn't been too bad. What new Nurgle DLC do you want to see? All right. So yeah, for Nurgle, just give me Tamarcon. So we're going to get ready for the next game. Thank you guys for joining today as I fire up the next battle. So I'm just going to delete this one to make sure we don't cast that again on accident because I'm a potato and we would do that. So now we're going to be going to the other part of the world. We are going to be doing the forces of uh, Kislev versus the Beastmen, which should be pretty fun. It should be pretty fun indeed. So let's get it. I think this is the right replay. Uh, let me double check it. Hang on. Hey, Drees, I'm shooting you a message right now. Let's see. Uh, did... no. I'm just making sure I have the right replay because it's uh, it's being done via replay. So Streltsy, the Streltsy RR is okay. I think they're kind of redundant. I, I think just bringing the action ambushers uh, is the way to go. All right, so where are we at? So let's see what replay we want to do next. We could do this one. Okay, that looks like fun as well. Ooh, so many replays to choose from. Uh, might have the wrong replay in here. Let me see if that's the case. Um... Uh, Just double checking. Alrighty, outstanding. So we got that on lock, and uh, now we are going to do the Kislev versus the Beastmen. All right, so let's load into this battle, see how this all unfolds here. All right, here we go. We're loading in, and check it out, guys. It's going to be Hadrius on Kislev. Now, he doesn't have any new units in his starting army, but there are new units in reserve, don't you worry. And uh, looks like it's going to be a lot of armored Kossar, double Patriarchs, and the Ice Witch facing off against Subutai, who's going to be coming in with the uh, Zangors. So very, very fun stuff for sure. Is there any reason to bring Streltsy over the new unit? Uh, I don't think so. I think that, well, I mean, sometimes guns are better at shooting things up in the sky and they are more durable. But overall, yeah, it's, it's a tricky one. Saint, thank you for the donation. Is it time to go bunga Yes, the, the cows are coming, dude. The cows are coming home. All right, guys, let's get it started. Blue Scribes get six spells. Yes. And they cost 2200 You cannot cut any of their spells. You cannot cut any of their spells. Yeah, the patch notes aren't out, but tomorrow I'm going to be doing a full stream where I go over everything. So if you guys want to like really get down to the kind of uh, nitty gritty of each unit, tomorrow is going to be the stream for that. Today is more of the focus on the battles and things like that. So, All right, guys. So as we saw in the Kislev army, it's going to be a lot of Kossars, right? With a couple of Zargard mixed in, Kossars are amazing against Beastmen because they bash most of their infantry and they also have light shooting against Minotaurs, Razor Gores, and big targets like that. A double Ice Switch, and it is going to be Patriarchs as well. And uh, all right, perfect. 
Looking good to me. Armored cost stars with great weapons in the back. Ice Witch is here with the Death Frost looking to snipe, actually, which is interesting. And for the Bray Herd, it is going to be a big old army of Zangors. So Zangors are obviously very good. And now Beastmen have a sustainable front line, which is crazy, crazy strong, right? Like normally Beastmen front lines are just going to be folding like a piece of paper. But now that they have these guys, it gives them like a heavily armored high leadership front line, which is crazy. More Crow the Shadow gave in the back. Minotaurs in reserve. And now we can do a little bit of fast forwarding while the two armies posture up. This is Hadri's versus Subatai in today's faction war. Players getting ready to uh, do their thing. The Kislev army does have new stuff. It's just in reserve. So don't worry. It'll be bringing out the new goodies. Yes, yes. So the Kislev army is the one that gets the initial placement up on the objective. And the first call-in, baby, is going to be the Incarnate of Elemental Beasts. And this thing is the Terminator of Beastmen. It has anti-large, it has armor piercing, it can tear through any of their big targets, and it does also have a mortise engine. So it's going to be getting in and doing some clubbing. Morker getting shot a little bit. Looks like the two patriarchs, Rasputin's homies, going to be moving out to try and hunt down Morker. He does get slapped with a death frost. Check this out. So Hadri is actually going for a bit of a snipe here. And yes, the Zangor is really nice against the Kossar shooting, which is, I mean, that's so nice for Beastmen, man. Silver shields, durable, but look at the Kossar shooting here. Just whipping out their pistols, bringing a unit of Minotaurs down so low, but the Zangors and the Minotaurs are going to be collapsing into the front line of the armored Kossar. Zargard with great opens moving in as well. But I know what you guys are here for. You want the sweet Elemental Incarnate. So the Elemental Incarnate, it smells blood, and it's going to be heading across to hunt down the Minotaurs. And man, the value it's going to be bringing between that, it's hard-hitting attacks, and it's Mortis Engine is so good. So it gets the Atomic Pimp Claw right there. Starts clawing through the Zangors, and I would imagine it's going to be hunting down the Butchers of Kalkengard. Also, the things in the woods have now arrived. Now, these guys are a hard counter against Zangors, right? They have Armor Piercing, Anti-Infantry, a little bit of stopping power. Obviously not going to be excellent against Minotaurs, but the things in the woods, they pack a punch for sure. So they're going to be detaching here, looking to engage against Zangors as the Elemental Incarnate keeps bashing through the Beastmen front line here. And what's so crazy good about this monster is, is that it, it, it does a Mortis Engine. So even though it's an anti-large monster, it's going to be draining the HP of all these units non-stop. On the other side, we do see the Bray Herd pushing through. Beautiful damage here by Subatai's Beastmen, uh, just crushing through the Zargard and these Armored Kossars between the Minotaurs and other Minotaurs here. And Zangors, they're doing some nasty, nasty damage for sure. But the things in the woods, we're able to find some Zangors to chew on, and they're going to be nibbling through the uh, Chaff Infantry of the Beastmen. As the Armored Kossars hold it down, we do see Hadri's pulling a pretty substantial value lead. And one thing that we are noticing is absent from the Beastmen army, is Ungor Raiders. Ungor Raiders would be an excellent answer against the Incarnate of Elemental Beasts, would also be very good against the things in the woods, but we're not seeing it. And I, I have a, a feeling that that thing is going to be running away with the engagement in the middle. On the backside objective, we do see a little bit of split pushing, so it looks like the Beastmen did try and do an ambush with some Zangors, which normally would trade pretty well into just like Armored Kossars and things like that, uh, because their stat lines are pretty similar, it'd be a relatively even trade, but the things in the woods are just going to tear them to shreds. And guys, these are so cost effective. Basically, Kislev got skin wolves that are designed to kill it. infantry. And what's really crazy about things in the woods is they're also really excellent at dealing with like cavalry. So if they have to fight things like Empire Knights or, uh, you know, you know, winged lancer type units, whatever, jade lancers, they might not win in a head up fight, but for 700 gold and that not being their role, they do a really, really excellent job. So the middle objective is scrapping pretty heavily. We do see Subutai pulling the value back, and the objective starting to flip. Morker getting a ton of momentum here as the Razor Gore herds and the Ungor herds and Morker the Shadow Gave keep tearing through these battle lines. But the one thing Kislev has going for it is the big elemental beast. This thing's anti-large attacks should be able to do some work. And remember, the Beastman army here is really falsely inflated. There's two units of Chaos Spawn that have come out from Morker, which are going to be pretty problematic. But yeah, guys. You, you can bet you can bet that Beastmen are going to be a big contender this patch. With Zangors and the Elemental Incarnate that they got on the roster, that really adds quite a bit. Nice isolation here by Hadris. Armored Kossar is able to get their pistols, ripping some nice shots into the hide of this Bray Shaman, who potentially is going to be breaking, and the Pit of Shades could be gone. The Elemental Incarnate fighting tooth and nail here, but the objective does end up flipping to the Beastmen, as many of the Kislevite forces are being overwhelmed here. Things in the woods trying to hold, and they have a respectable leadership and physical resist, but they're not going to be able to probably stand up to the onslaught of Razor Wars and Gore Herds here. But this man, this is the carry. The Beastmen didn't really bring any good answers, and let's just watch some of these glorious animations for a minute. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll just be quiet. Just watch. Oh, get in there. I mean, this thing reminds me of the monster from the Ritual, if you haven't seen that. He's got some really rad attack animations. He has one where he, like, shoots a laser beam out of his chest. It's some wild shit. Let's see, is he going to do it? Oh, no, he's just doing his, like, frenzy claw attacks. And honestly... Seems like he's pretty damn good against infantry too. So the Elemental Incarnate up to a thousand value so far. It did break that infantry position. And the Elemental Incarnate doesn't have access to healing, but in this case, it has double Patriarchs. 
So, I mean, it has access to healing via the Kistle of Roster, but it doesn't heal itself. And now the anti-large attacks going after the Minotaurs with great weapons. Very, very good tactics here by Hadries. Going after one of the few units here that can actually, you know, deal with it. These anti-large Minotaurs. Oh, are these the Arwars? Yes, we got the Mordheim Beowulfs. These guys are rad. So these are the Arwar things in the woods. And they're actually a pretty cool tech against a Beastman. Let me explain why. So when these bad boys hit you, they add negative 100% healing. So if they hit your Butchers of Kalkengard, if they're attacking Warker, he cannot heal. It is a really cool tech, and I think it's going to be used against Vampire Counts and several other rosters. It's a hard counter against the Sternsmen, healing infantry units, Kepra Guard, whatever. It gets rid of all healing. So Kislev actually starts to break up with the middle point. You can see the Elemental Incarnate kind of putting the game on his back. In the backfield, the things in the woods clearing up a lot of the infantry as the Ice Witch able to uh, also support with a little bit of magic. She's been, of course, casting throughout the course of the game. And uh, now we do see the Kosovite Dervishes and the Patriarchs moving up. And it's looking like the Beastmen are in some serious danger. Uh, we see the things in the woods rallying to go after Morker. So there are two of them here. Going to start clawing him down. The Mordheim Beowulfs lurking somewhere. Incarnate of Elemental Beast going to be more descending down these uh, Ungor Spearmen herds and also providing his anti-large attacks. Cosfight Dervishes might get ground down, but I think the Beastmen might have run out of steam. We see some Minotaurs with great weapons on the other side. They could head towards objective number three, but um, overall, I do think Kislev is probably going to be taking this game. But honestly, I have played probably 20 to 30 games now on the early build, and we have actually seen the Beastmen beat Kislev several times. Uh, one of the big flaws that didn't occur in this game was there was no Ungor Raiders. Ungor Raiders would have been really good against this build because they could kill things in the woods very effectively and they could also take down or at least pressure the Incarnate of Elemental Beasts. So we didn't see that. It was more of like an aggressive Beastman melee rush which had really good initial shock value but once the sustained combat got going it didn't get the job done. So things in the woods ripping away here at Morker. It looks like there's going to be another Death Frost going down on that man. Razor Gore Herd saturating their way in. Things in the woods clawing and uh, looking to hunt down Zangors. But yeah, that is going to be GG well played. As a thing in the woods, uh, not thing in the woods, but I guess it is another thing in the woods. But the Incarnate of Elemental Beast rocking about 2,000 value probably. It hasn't paid for itself yet, but it still has a lot more to give there. So um, it's going to be clawing through these Zangors, living its best life. And ladies and gentlemen, that looks like it's going to be a victory for Kislev. And don't worry, Mother Stank is going to be coming soon. You don't worry, she's she's on her way. You'll be seeing her in several of these uh, glorious battles that we have today. But um, yeah, the Beastman basically just going to be trickling in at this point. We do see uh, Morker actually being killed by the Death Frost tech, which is wild. Morker going down is not something you see often, but Death Frost was actually able to kill him. The magic damage, uh, punching through his spell resist, not really caring too much. And with that, Hadris, the Things in the Woods, and the Elemental Incarnate going to be claiming First Blood here today. And any new units that you guys don't see on today's stream, maybe they're not featured as much, I will be having replays going up over the course of the next few days. That's going to be, you know, going hard. So don't you worry. Uh, yeah, so I mean, Armored Cossars are insane. I mean, not that they got like a ton of value, but their holding power is really, really good. Patriarchs providing healing to the big beast were nice. Uh, let's see how the beast did. 2,000 value on the Elemental Incarnate. Things in the woods. Wow, 1,700. And that's the thing. If the Beastmen don't go Zangors, if they just go cheap Chaff units with Spears backed up by Ungor Raiders and Minotaurs, I think they can beat this Kislev build. But the build he brought kind of was a little bit rough. He didn't have any answers for the Elemental Incarnate because there was no Raiders, and Zangors get countered by the Things in the Woods. So I think more of a Chaff-centric Beastmen army with Ungor Raiders would be much stronger against his style of play. Also, Centigors do really, really well against the Things in the Woods. They'll be able to tear them apart pretty effectively. So let's go ahead and get this going. All right, all right, where are we? So Faction War Bracket, that is going to be a victory for Hadris gets one, yes. So the format is round robin today, so every player is going to be playing every other player, essentially. So, And whoever has the best record after everything is said and done will be claiming the prize. Yeah, the Incarnate's really, really good. It's it's great, but it, it can die. It's, it's like Ungor Raiders kill it extremely quickly. It has barely, it doesn't have that much armor, so... Yeah, it's very strong. Yeah, the Ice Witch blasting herself was pretty funny for sure. Huge, we'll call it the huge thing in the woods, yes. Is there a reason to take Ice or Temp? The Hags are really good. Honestly, Hadris could have brought a Hag Witch in that matchup and it would have been totally fine. Um, the Beastmen don't have any cannons or ways to really snipe the Hag Witch. So um, I think that would have been really good. Uh, is the Incarnate Unbreakable? I have to check that, I think. Uh, I think it is, actually. I'll have to double check, though. Can the Changeling turn into Lord Croak? It can turn into any Lord or Hero in the game, yes. But it, you don't get the mount, which is really haggard. So if you turn into, like, Carl Franz, you get him on foot. Yeah, you get him on foot. 
Elemental Incarnate versus the Cathay Sentinel. I think the Incarnate would win because it's an anti-large monster and the Sentinel is a generalist. So it's not designed to like take other large targets on super hard. All right, so let's delete that game. Let's find it. Um, all right, so we did Kislev versus the Beastmen. And now we are going to do, let's see. We can do Kislev versus Grand Cathay could be a fun one for sure. Let's go ahead and throw that bad boy in there. So next up, we are going to do Kislev versus Grand Cathay. We're loading into the game, ladies and gentlemen. It's gonna be Hadries versus Professor Pwn. Looks like it's gonna be a little grom, some things in the woods for Professor Pwn. He does have Yuan Bo, Gotrek, and Felix, a couple of the uh, Celestial Dragon Guard, a lantern, all the goodies in the realm. All right, guys, let's get it, man. Thank you for joining today. And round robin, as I said, so everybody will play everybody. In the rare event of a tie, uh, there would be a uh, FFA game at the very end to decide the winner. So that's how it's going to be going down. All right. So thank you for joining. Let the good times roll. I'm having a lot of fun. I do think overall the biggest winners are probably Zinch and Kislev. Grand Cathay is going to be a lot stronger, though, for sure. But they're a little bit harder to play. Like Kislev, you can kind of just throw things in the woods and have Armored Cossars carry you. But... With Grand Cafe, positioning is really important still. Uh, the Crowmen are probably the best unit that Grand Cafe got. The drum is good on certain maps. If you're on a really small map where it's like a lane objective, the drum is very, very strong, actually. You saw the replay I put up this morning where Grand Cafe smashed the Ogre Kingdoms using like a drum and an elite infantry core. So, so yeah, it tries. Now for Hadri, it's going to be a lot of Armored Cossars um, backed up by more Armored Cossars with great weapons because they're just such a good unit. In the backfield, one little Grom going to be taking pot shots uh, downtown, but Cafe Cannons can certainly kill it if it's not careful. Ice Witch of Tempest does have Blizzard and Gust of True Flight, and we do have the Mordheim Beowulfs in the back. So the Mordheim Beowulfs are certainly ready to party, apply some poison, and uh, potentially shut down healing on the character squad, which is rad. For Grand Cathay, we have Yuan Bo, and he's going to be coming in with the classic kit of Jade Shield, Talons of the Night, and Net of Amatok, Celestial Guard, Spears, and all those goodies in the back. The Celestial General is okay, but Yuan Bo is a raid boss. He's really, really good. So um, yeah, he's usually going to be the way to go. So objective is going to be opening up here pretty quickly. On uh, the middle, it looks like that's where Grand Cathay is going to be kind of hunkering down here. Yuan Bo and the character squad getting shot by pistols, but not caring too much because he does have access to some healing from Felix and Gotrek. So Yuan Bo getting in and uh, going after the armored Cossars. Hadri is going to be looping around with the Mordheim Beowulfs, probably looking for some goodies. And I think a Talons of the Knight's going to be going down, which I wager Hadri's probably will dodge, although maybe not. So that goes down. Ooh, nice catch. That was a good cast by Pwn. It actually kind of grabs two units and is able to nail both the Armored Cossars and the other unit. And you can see a lot of them are actually trapped in there taking HP damage. So Grand Cathay going to move Jade Warriors over towards Objective 3 and the rest of the Grand Cathay forces, the Celestial Dragon Guard heading to the middle. And Grand Cathay's Hero Hammer is actually very strong in this patch. But Armored Cossar shooting against Gotrek and Felix, both of whom aren't like super heavily armored, can be uh, very, very nasty for sure. So Jet Lion is being called in. My overall opinion of Jet Lions, it's still in flux. I personally don't think they're very good, especially against like a faction like Kislev, who has a lot of armor piercing. But even still, it does have a Guardian Shield, which gives you spell resist, and it has a Missile Reflect. So you can drop this on like actually into Ambushers or different units like that. Now check it out, guys. This thing is great. This is the Wolf Hearts, or these are the Wolf Hearts. These are the ROR Akshini Ambushers. They're basically like shades. They have armor piercing great opens in melee, armor piercing range attacks, but more importantly, they have a net, which is so good. I actually lost a game against Kislev with my Empire, which you'll be seeing the replay uh, sometime in the next month or so. I'll wait till you guys forget I said that. And um, it, it basically he traps down my War Wagon and just gats it down. It's so good. So these bad boys have nets. It's really, really powerful. So things in the woods battling here against the old jet line, but the problem with the jet line is it only has 70 armor and it's just being mowed down by a lot of armor piercing as well as light shots. Also, little Grom is probably putting some hurt onto that, but Yuan Bo and the character squad saturating in pretty well. Celestial Dragon Garter in combat, and it looks like the middle objective is going to be going to Grand Cathay for now. So Grand Cathay does initially get the two uh, objectives there. So they have objective two and they have objective one on the far side. But Kislev is going to be rolling in with quite a few units. But the Cathay Death Star is actually no joke. Hadri's does have a pretty massive value lead from shooting the Jet Lion as well as Yuan Bo here. But there is Felix healing. So if Felix is able to effectively heal these characters up, it could be quite nice. But yeah, we do have the healing debuff on the Mordheim Brawlers, which is so, so cool. So the battle rages on here on the far side. Peasant Long Spearman coming in. The Empress's Chromen getting ready to party. I'm curious to see what he's going to be doing there. It looks like Kislev going to be dropping a fat erect blizzard. Oh no, the elite Celestial Dragon Guard Pwn did not dodge up. But look at the bombardment from the Crowmen, immediately taking these armored Cossars down to half health. Those Crowmen are really, really good. Now it looks like they're maybe going to be diving into the backfield. Yes, the Crowmen are going to be going after the Wolf Hearts. They'll probably be shot off 
And Grand Cathay is now called in cannons as well. So some cannons from Professor Pwn going to be shooting into the front line here against the Kossars. And the Crowmen are now diving the backfield. And if they weren't being shot in the back by Kossars, these Crowmen probably would be able to tear apart the Axian ambushers and do some really, really nice stuff. So yeah, that is... You can see the utility that you get from these Crowmen. They do a lot of work. Um, but overall, the Vortex there was really gross. The Celestial, Temple, uh, Celestial Dragon Guard getting dragged down by that Blizzard. The other Celestial Guard doing well. The Jet Line's going to be on his way back in. And Professor Pwn's Hero Squad is still very viable and very strong. Side objective being held by Professor Pwn. Healing being taken into account. It's a little bit of a closer game, but I would say Kislev is certainly still ahead. And Hadrius is doing a good job of avoiding the heroes where it really matters and using his things in the woods to tear apart these infantry and do some incredibly nasty damage. So yeah, they're going to be nibbling away, tearing at the Celestial Dragon Guard in the back. And here we do see Yuan, Bo, Felix, and Gotrek getting quite a bit of healing, grinding through these infantry units. On the far side, Kossify Dervish is being called in, so it looks like Hadrius is going to be diving the backfield with some Kossify Dervishes to try and shut down that Grand Cafe Cannon. That would be my guess. And here, Little Grom is going to be nuking into, I believe it finished off the Jet Lion just now. Now, middle objective going to be flipping to the forces of Kislev, it looks like. Grand Cuthe going to be calling in more and more Jade Warriors. So we've got two Jade Warrior units coming in. The Grand Cuthe Cannon has noticed it is being approached by some Kossify Dervishes and is going to be shooting it down with cannons. And obviously, Professor Pone is going to be calling out some sort of a cavalry unit to... Uh, move up and go after the dervishes and intercept those bad boys. Yuanbo still duking it out here, but being shot by a lot of pistol fire, and I would wager they're probably going to try, try and snipe Felix and or Gotrek here. Things in the woods and the Mordheim Beowulfs tearing through those units. Actually, the ambushers back online, so we do, of course, see the wolf hearts with their nice armor-piercing shots. Actually, oh, man, look at the pack trap. So Yuan Bo got caught in the trap from the Axian Ambushers, and that's one of the reasons why he took some solid damage there. But Jade Warriors on the way up in the backfield. Looks like Pwn was able to protect his cannon, so he called out some Jade Lancers in the fourth quarter here and was able to push back the Kossavite Dervishes. Kislev, of course, they fight to the bitter end, but they're going to be fighting until there's literally only one model left, and uh, those cavalry should be able to come up and help. But will the Hero Hammer squad be enough to get through this? I'm starting to feel like no, that's probably not going to be the case. Yeah, I don't know why the Jet and Jade lines aren't unbreakable. It's really silly. Like, they, like, I, I can, yeah, like, from a lore perspective, it's like an animated statue. Like, make it like the Terracotta Sentinel. I don't know why they can break. It's really, really weird. I mean, I already think they're kind of a bad unit, but, um, I mean, that would make them a little bit better, at least. So you have some, like, staying power and things like that. They're also overpriced, in my opinion. They cost, like, almost 1300 They cost, like, more than a Tomb Scorpion, and uh, I don't think they're as good. So Yuan Bo and Jade Warriors fighting here, dragging down the last of the wolves with the big attacks from Big Juan. And also Gotrek and Felix grinding away with their bonus first infantry there and uh, their armor piercing attacks. But now Kislev going to be showing the strength of their mobility. Things in the woods going to be able to come in and just rip through these guys. So these Jade Warriors are going to get mulched pretty hard here. So here they come, tearing through these units, and that is going to be some ripping, and that is going to be some tearing, ladies and gentlemen, as those guys get... Uh, Wrecked. Yeah, I agree with you, Pwn. They're, they're a very, very haggard unit. But man, these units are so good. Because they kind of fulfill a similar role to the Heavy War Sleds, but they're cheaper. The Heavy War Sleds do have the shooting, so there are going to be situations in which Heavy War Sleds would be your go-to. But Things of the Woods, I think, are going to be the new standard. So it looks like some Peasant Horsemen came in to reinforce against these units. But Kossify Dervishes are just straight up better than them. And there's also an Ice Witch of Tempest, who's probably going to be dropping a fat erect blizzard. I mean, Hadrius is straight up one of the best players in the entire world. He is not going to miss He's not going to miss opportunities like this. He's probably going to see that and go for it, I would imagine. Middle objective owned by Kislev. Top objective owned by Kislev as well. Yuan Bo and company. The thing is, the playstyle that Professor Pwn went for, which is like the Hero Hammer, is really powerful on maps that are a line map. So this is what I like to call an Itza style map, where the objectives are side by side. And Hero Hammer builds are not very good on maps like this because they can't cover all three objectives. Whereas if you have a back objective, a center objective, and an objective on the other side, they can just grind on the middle, and it's really hard for your opponent to get your back objective. So, um, so yeah, overall, Trixie Hobbits is for sure. On the side objective, it looks like Hadrius did see the prize and was able to nuke them. So those guys are running for the hills. Things in the woods and the old Kossavite Dervishes going to be taking down those. And at this point, it's looking pretty bleak for Grand Cathay. Uh, Gotrek looks like he may have been shot down. We do still have no. We have Gotrek, but Felix was the one who was most likely taken down. Crowmen coming in for a little bit of diving up on the top side. And uh, they're going to be going after the armored Kossars. Cannon fire into the Dervishes here. And Jade Lancers, I think, are peasant horsemen into things in the woods. See, this is how you deal with them. Just throw, like, cheap light cavalry at things in the woods. And it's actually a relatively even trade. Because they only have 30 armor and their melee defense isn't great. You just don't want to, like, give them things to trade up into. Like a single unit of peasant spearmen would beat them in combat. 
So Cannon still shooting away. Don't know if Pone's going to be able to defend the backfield. Looks like his Cannon is probably going to be going down here as Hadri starts to take over the game. We do see the things in the woods and the Dervishes grinding it on out here. Armored Kossars and Zargard in the middle doing their job. And Yuanbo, you know, he's trying to carry this game. He's gotten 2,000 value from fighting through units, but overall, uh, it's not going to be enough. We do see the Dervishes making it back here. And at this point, we can probably do fast forwarding. Because most of you guys who've seen, you know, enough domination games know what this is over. This one's not gonna not gonna go well for the forces of old Grand Cafe. Uh, question from chat: Were ogres nerfed? Yes. Uh, the Sky Striders got a cost increase of about two hundred, and also we saw Noblar Trappers lose their bonus for his infantry and get a plus fifty gold cost. So that is the way of doing it. Now we played this matchup a bit in the DLC. Uh, I, I do think Kislev might be a little bit favored against Grand Cafe, but I honestly think it's not by much. Grand Cafe has some builds. And obviously, everybody's just learning here, and Hadrius is, is just a really, really scary opponent. But um, overall, Grand Cafe uh, does have some really nice tools against uh, Kislev on certain maps. Like, their cannons can be very devastating, and just, you know, archer lines. So, like, Jade crossbow lines with Yuan Bo or, you know, any sort of a character like that. And yeah, it looks like Yuan Bo's going to get taken down. He goes human form, but is basically going to get last hammer right here. Here we do have a Hagwitch, so check it out. Hagwitches are awesome because the Beast Hagwitch has access to a summon. So the Hagwitch of Beasts has an armor-piercing chariot, but she can also summon things in the woods and has a shooting attack. She's very, very good. So what a lot of people will probably do is bring her as just like a DPS chariot and then bring her for the summon. Although only the lore of Beasts Hagwitch has access to that summon. So um, so yeah, GG. No, both of the lines, in, in my opinion, are, uh, are pretty bad. Yeah, they don't even cause terror, which is weird. Like, if they cause terror, I'd be like, oh, that's actually not bad. But, like, they're just really, really not well designed, those lions. All right. So, taking a look at the build here. Cool stuff. A lot of the old uh, Kossars carrying weight. Things in the woods. Action ambushers with 1,200 value. Hagwitch coming in to close things out. Things in the woods. Very, very good. Eric. So, anyways, I started blasting. Yes. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate the donation, my friend. Anthony. Thank you, brother. Thank you, thank you. You guys you guys rock, man. We have a big donation from One Ton Hammer. I missed that during the game. Thank you so much, man. Super generous. Really, I hope it's no sweat off your back. Thank you guys for supporting the channel here. Uh, so the witches, have they have beasts. Let me actually double check that real quick. So firstly, we're going to update this. And I can show you guys. So with that being said, Hadris is going to go to 2-0, having defeated Beastmen and Grand Cathay in today's Faction War. And by the way, if you guys like this format, like mini faction wars they're way easier to organize and i could do them more often where we get four players in and have them kind of duke it out with like their favorite factions i think that could be really fun and uh that is going to be grand cafe going here all right kislev is very strong but they can be defeated for sure all right so let's go here i kislev is going to be the strongest faction of the game i think yeah they're going to be the strongest game in the faction that that's my like prediction right now so let me delete that one. All right, and head over here. Skirmish versus AI. All right, so while I have you guys here, screw it, let's have some fun, man. Let's let's like look at some stuff. Um, so we're gonna go to this and outstanding. Okay, so Beastman got, I'm gonna do like a flash breakdown, okay? I'm gonna do a flash breakdown. The Beastman got Zangors. Um, and they also got the uh, Elemental Incarnate. Very, very good stuff. So they're certainly happy. Beastmen are going to be enjoying themselves. Uh, another big one is going to be the Warriors of Chaos. So Warriors of Chaos got access to Aeok. Dude, there's some crazy, crazy Warriors. Of I'll, I'll get to I'll get to everything. Don't worry. Yes, Sir Nicholas, Grail Knights did get nerfed. Um, Aeokold Hellbrass is on on uh, the Forces of Chaos now. So you can go Aeokold and Sigvald, and it's disgusting, dude. These guys are just two unbreakable bricks on an objective that just, like, never leave. Um... On top of that, they got Zangors and Warriors of Chaos got the Mutalith Beast as well as the ROR. So yeah, Warriors of Chaos made out like absolute bandits in this patch. They uh, they made out like absolute bandits. So they're they're just cackling all the way to the bank. Yeah, this is this is this is pretty good here. Um, other big stuff. So if we're taking a look around, we'll go to Bretonia real quick. Grail Knights got a cost increase, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure, but they they're fixed now. They don't automatically plow through things. Uh, Grail Relics got a cost increase. A lot of cost increases across. Uh, Bretonia in tandem with the Grail Knights and Grail Guardians, not just like plowing through like all of that stuff, right? So that's a pretty big change. For Chaos Dwarfs, the capture weight of Orc Labors is now fixed. So Orc and Goblin Labors have regular capture weight and all the Chaos Dwarf trains are no longer bugged. They they seem to work fine. Um, so that's cool. Other stuff that's of like major significance, uh, Grand Cathay. So we're going to look at this real quick. I'm going to have a stream going through all this tomorrow though. So don't worry guys. 
Miao Ying, she got the new Van Braces of Yin, so she gives an aura of negative eight melee attack around her. The Iron Dragon is the one who scored the biggest. He got the Burning Van Braces. This item is disgustingly OP. When he drops below 25%, as long as he's in dragon form, uh, he heals instantly like to max health. An instant heal, and it gives him 40% ward save. The Iron Dragon is going to be an absolute raid boss to take down in some matchups. So you saw that, and uh, obviously you guys know about the Jet Lions and the Jade Lions. This guy has a, a breath attack, which is kind of like whatever. Um, and it does also give you power recharge. And this guy has Missile Mirror and a Magic Resist Aura, but it's honestly not that good. Um, yeah, the drums are cool too, but you'll be seeing all this stuff in battle. Dude, the Iron Dragon is is the, the cackling beast. He's really, really good. Um, other changes of note. Uh, Skaven had some changes, very minor. I know Doom Wheels got a cost reduction, I think. So Doom Wheels are a little bit cheaper now, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. I, I could have sworn they were higher, but I'm just doing this all from observation. I don't have the official patch notes yet. So these are just things I've noticed. There's going to be a lot of changes that fly under my radar. Um, here we have Noblar Trappers. So they cost 50 more gold and they lost their bonus for infantry. That's pretty much the only change to Ogres, which I think is going to be uh, pretty good indeed. Yeah, dude, the Iron Dragon just instantly heals to full health. It's crazy. It's crazy. Can we see Iron Dragon again? I'll show you real quick, okay? After this, we're going to get back to the faction war, though, because tomorrow I'm going to like have a more structured stream where we go over everything. We're going to go over absolutely everything. I'm just giving you guys like a flash take on everything. Um, all right. So where are we? So let's go to Grand Cathay. Uh-huh. We're going to get Homeboy Iron Dragon and we're going to do this just so I don't route. And then that's fine. So we're going to do that. All right. Uh, cool. So does he have the items? Yes. All right. Uh, let's do Pillar of Bone. And then we'll continue with the stream uh, and stay focused on the goodies. Yeah, oh yeah, I, 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 I'm making an entire video of feedback on the changeling. It's going to go up tonight, like later tonight. Yeah, like I know how to fix the changeling. If they put me in charge of it, I can make him viable, fun, balanced for multiplayer, and fun for campaign too. Sign me up, dude. I'll do that shit for free. I, I have a whole plan how to fix them. You have scaling cost. So every Lord he changes into changes the price of the character. And then you add a premium on top of that. Okay. So if I want to change, change into Sigvald who costs 1200 gold, uh, you know, I might pay like 1600, 15, 16, 1700. So you, you have the gold of the Lord you want to change into plus the premium. Okay. Another one that would be a really good change for him would be uh, having his change be temporary. So the changeling can turn into uh, a Lord, but then he, he has to change back to changeling form. There's a short cooldown before he can do it again. There's a bunch of ways to fix him. Okay, so we're going to move forward, um, and I'll show you guys his heal. It's pretty wild. All right, there we are. We're going to go dragon form, because this only procs when he's in dragon form. So we're going to go in and just let him get absolutely mowed down here um, by this archer line. All right, come on. So Grimgore's got him. Your next is pops. Yeah, keep that archer fire going. All right. So the van braces are going to proc here. It's so insane. So ready? Here it goes. Oh, look at that. He's like full health. He's like healing capped. And on top of that, check it out. So he just healed to healing cap and it gives him ward save uh, for a period of time. So now he gets, after it procs, he gets 40% ward save. <laughs> he basically just goes to healing cap and then, uh, you know, does that. Anyways, let me get the next game ready. I just wanted to show you guys that real quick. Dude, that's, it's so good. It is so incredibly good. Yeah. So prepare, I, I feel bad for land battle players because land battle, that's going to be super toxic. Like in Dom, it's not too bad because you don't, it's not about like sniping, like sniping is good and all, but it's more about playing the objectives and whatnot. But in land battle, that's going to be pure suffering. <laughs> that's going to be pure suffering in land battle, but you know, not my problem. So we will go to, I don't think it's like as bad in Dom, but yeah, in land battle, like I'm saying, it's, it's pretty nasty. All right. So next up, we'll do one of my games. We will do, uh, myself. We, did we do that one? We're saving that. Okay, so we'll do a Beastmen game because we, yeah, we'll do Beastmen versus Grand Cathay. All right. It's gnarly, dude. It's gnarly. Yeah. Cathay be became even worse in land battle, I know. <laughs> it's He just healing caps, basically. It's just, that's what he does. All right. Some dev played the Iron Dragon in campaign and had him get sniped by the AI. The rest is history. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. So this is going to be Subachai versus Professor Pwn. And take note, guys, Pwn is making a sacrifice for all of our sins. He is bringing an absolute, 
I mean, the drums are good, but he's going the extra distance and bringing the meme drum, the ROR war drum. So, you know, he's making a sacrifice for all of us to put on an excellent showcase. So let's let's give the boy some props. So he's coming in with the meme drum. The Iron Dragon is here, and he also does have crossbows and uh, some halberds and whatnot. Going to be most likely going for a defensive box and trying to push his opponent out. Festus and Aeacold is going to be amazing. Festus, Aeacold, and some sort of another hero. Dude, sign me up for that shit all day. All day, baby. All right, so for Grand Cathay, it's going to be the new war drum, the Jade war drum, the Zhanggu war drum. This thing gives leadership. Uh, it does also have the ability to toggle between a melee attack buff for two units. So the war drum basically works the same as um, as Festus. You can switch between the two modes like pretty much nonstop. You can give armor to nearby units, or you can give melee attack and ITP to nearby units. On top of that, though, Pwn going hard in the paint. He has the Fury of the Falling Blade. So this one... Uh, gives magic attack and speed so you can pop this drum and make your army move a little bit faster it's it's really the ultimate sacrifice for us he did it he's he's the true hero of the people jade warrior crossbows in the back iron dragon with breath attack and final transmutation and a couple jade warrior halberds in the back now subatai is going to be going for a big stinky change he's good uh or ambush i should say yes well change because it's each but it just kind of got stuck in my head uh, power grab still is a thing, but it is going to be getting fixed in the next uh, mini patch, which will be coming soon, hopefully. So uh, it, it's been confirmed that it's not working as intended. It's a, it's a bug mechanic. So uh, Zangors are here. So it's going to be Zangors into the sunset. So yeah, they're really good. They will bash Cathay infantry, but Cathay will hold. But yeah, Zangors give you that sustainability to really dive your opponent. We do also have a couple spears in the back line. Uh, Morker the Shadow Cave, and there are going to be some Minotaurs with dual weapons on the other side. Subutai with the stinky beastman ambush. Yes, he is. He's coming out of the trees and looking to. You want to see the animations on the drum? I think it's pretty haggard, but it does like every now and then. Do those guys? Hang on. Do these guys move or are they just like completely frozen? Okay, he has a face. It looks like the. Okay, no, he's got a face. Man, that guy's like one of those guys who guards the royal palace in uh, England. <laughs> just sitting there. The the little drum thing occasionally does beat, like hits the side when it gets into combat. I think. Yeah. Anyways, guys, yeah, 100 meter radius is fat. The war drums are actually good on some maps. They're good on some maps. Zangors are a little bit more heavily armored. Yeah, they got 80 armor. They're pretty jacked. They are pretty jacked indeed. So, yeah, the drums' magic damage could be relevant against demon factions, you know, to give past the physical resist, I suppose. My favorite is actually the disdain of the Dragon Emperor because it puts the melee attack of Jade Warriors up to almost 40, which makes them actually, like, pretty killing units. But, um, you know, <laughs> that's one rough model. I know, it's super haggard looking, isn't it? So we'll do fast forwarding while the two players posture up. It looks like the Beastmen are going to be going for a stuffing strategy. So they're going to be trying to ambush Professor Pwn with the back objective, which is kind of what Cathay wants in some ways. They want to have the drum fight and just kind of be getting in there, right? So Crossbow's getting ready to party. Crowmen being called in. The Empress is Crowmen. Most likely going to be dropping some sweet bombardments, but this is going to be a nasty Beastmen ambush here. Subutai is really, really good at these like big, big sweaty ambushes. And uh, they're going to be coming in here. So Minotaur is from the far side, but Halberd's going to be trying to form ranks to deal with that. The War Drum is basically hitting every unit here right now. It's uh, I don't know if it's quite hitting these Halberds, but if Pwn parked it like right in the middle, it would. So where are the Crowmen going to be going? Crowmen would probably be best suited to go after Minotaurs because of their light armor. Halberd's going to be rushing up to intercept. It looks like Grand Cathay is going to be taking the center objective. So Dune Dragons, this is definitely a slight misplay. The Dune Dragons should be pulled back to this fight right now, but I'm sure he'll do that shortly. So in the front, some of the Zangors do get shut down. Grand Cathay's battle lines are holding, and they do have the Bastion of the Great Cities, which is going to be putting their armor up to 114, which is actually really, really tanky. But the Beastman Ambush is pretty nasty right here. Granted, Pwn's value lead is there. His Jade Warrior Halberds are fighting Minotaurs, and he does notice that the Dune Dragons are needed in this fight, and it's going to be pulling the Dune Dragons back. But that drum is going in the deep, and uh, those bad boys are going to be slapping the base here as a beautiful Vortex, most likely the Pit of Shades from Subutai, is going to be going down. So Pit of Shades does nail those, and there is going to be a counterplay, so the Iron Dragon then responds with the final transmutation, which was a very good cast. It hits pretty much the entire front line, also hits some Minotaurs, and the drum, it's going to war! It's charging the Razor Gores. It looks like it's trying to get pretty crunk over here, but... Yes, the armor buff is really nice. I mean, it's going to make Zangors bounce off these Jade Warriors like it's nobody's business. And it looks like the backfield is uh, pretty much compromised. All the crossbows have been overwhelmed by the Minotaurs, but the Halberds are holding well. And the Crowmen are a really good answer against Razor Gores because of their light armor and the good combat stats on the Crowmen. And these Crowmen now have almost 40 armor from the drum too, which is pretty cool. Grand Cathay is up in value. They're up on objectives as well. So we see Grand Cathay setting at 35 to 21. So the drum is keeping those bad boys listening. Yeah, I have my game sound turned down pretty low, but you actually can hear the drum beating over the course of a battle if you have your volume up high enough. So there's Jangu War Drum, the Jade War Drum going to be pulling back, trying to keep these uh, Cathay units nice and tanky. As far as reinforcements go, it's going to be more Crowmen and also some Jade Warriors in reserve. 
But the Beastman Minotaur squad is quite scary. Lots of halberds, and halberds are rocking a fair amount of armor and currently are getting... Yeah, they have their defensive stance. But yeah, the War Drum needs to pull and just kind of sit in a very centralized formation if it can. But yeah, Chroman as a tool against Razor Gores and Minotaurs and Centigores is going to be a huge boon. Middle objective being held onto. Really good screening here by Subutai, showing that he's just a solid, you know, domination veteran here. Uh, using the cheap, shitty Ungors to kind of screen the, uh, the Dune Dragons out is a really, really good play. It kept them away from a very important fight for a long time. But the Iron Dragon is going to be going Dragon Mode, and I would wager attacking into the Minotaurs and some of these other units. Pit of Shades going down right here. Uh, it does hit the Chroman and some Jade Warrior Halberds. That was an excellent, excellent cast by Subutai. He's been really, really on point with all of his magic this game. War Drum keeping the boys fighting pretty hard, and now the Iron Dragon going to be descending from the skies. I believe, why does he not do fire damage? Isn't he literally like some Desert Alchemist? Eh. And nonetheless, the Dune Dragons will make their way in, and that's going to give Cathay a pretty good fighting position. Granted, it looks like the Zhangu War Drum might be going down here. Granted, the War Drums are unbreakable. It's funny that the War Drum isn't unbreakable, is unbreakable, but the Jet Lions aren't. Some weird stuff for sure. But it's going to be battling it out here in the old pits. Zhao Ming, the Iron Dragon, going to be duking it out with the Razor Gore Herds, looking to cause some terror routes. And now the Dune Dragons have made it onto the back point. So currently, Grand Cathay maintaining a very small value lead. Uh, still a pretty good stranglehold on the middle objective. They got Spears and Jade Warriors there, which take a little bit of effort to remove. But now they really, really need these Dune Dragons to carry this game. And they might be able to. The War Drum, unfortunately, probably is going to go down. Bastion of the Great Cities is active. And uh, looks like the Iron Dragon may be attacking Morker, which I do think is a bit of a mistake. Probably going back to human form and just slapping down a huge final transmutation here would be the play for sure. So, um, yeah. Who knows what's going to happen? Backfield, Halberds on their way in. Celestial Dragon Guard, Jade Warriors intercepted by a lot of Minotaurs. Really, really good Beastmen interference by Subutai. Beastmen are uh, going to be such a fun faction to play. I think Beastmen, last patch they were sitting around 50%. I can see Beastmen with these new units going up to like a 50 to 55% win rate faction because they're very respectable against some of the top tier factions like Kislev. They'll be good against Bretonia with their Razor Gores and Minotaurs. It's going to be pretty interesting for sure. But yeah, Dune Dragon's grinding away. They should be pretty favorable against a lot of these different units. But man, there are a lot of Beastmen here, guys. And Grand Cathay is starting to look a little bit thin. So Jade Warriors, Celestial Dragon Guard, Celestial Dragon Guard in reserves, trying to make their way in. On the middle objective, Peasant Spears battling Razor Gores. That's actually pretty, pretty cost effective for Professor Pone, I would say. And these Jade Lancers are going to make very quick work of these Razor Gores with the spear support, especially considering they're rampaging right now. Iron Dragon trying to juke it out, and remember, he needs to be in dragon form if uh, if you want the goodies to go off. And it looks like Pone is going to be casting a big final transmutation here, and that's a beautiful cast. That, that's a beauty right there. Hits the Razor Gores, hits these guys, also hits the Zangors. Morgher has pretty good spell resist, but he might be able to get this back objective back. We'll see. So Onyx Chromen and Celestial Dragon Guard on their way up. A couple units at the back certainly need a little bit of housekeeping to be unsummoned, but Grand Cathay does pull ahead in value once again. And uh, yeah, those Dune Dragons are doing really good. Cutting through the Minotaurs, putting up an excellent fight here in this situation. But um, yeah, the drums are unbreakable because you can't hear no bell over their sick beats. I know, yeah. The, the Cathay drum is, is actually, I like it. I'm going to be using it in a lot of matchups for sure if I play Grand Cathay. Um, Peasant Long Spearman fighting it out against Butchers of Kalkengard. Not bad. Jade Warriors trying to anchor. But those Butchers of Kalkengard are nasty. Grand Cathay certainly going to need some reinforcements in the middle. They're putting a lot of effort into this uh, side here. And honestly, one of the things that I think has kept Subutai in this game and helps him kind of retain his value deficit and get back up has been his Pit of Shades. They've been really good. But Pit of Shades is a much more balanced spell now. It, it uh, just costs so much more wins and has a longer wind-up time. There's a lot of counterplay in terms of, uh, like, dodging it. But Dune Dragon's fighting it out here. Iron Dragon trying to support as well on foot. Middle objective being held by Grand Cathay, but just barely. Looks like the Beastmen might be able to get the momentum they need with the team uh, big, big Minotaurs on their way in. As far as the backfield goes for Grand Cathay, it's going to be a Grand Cannon. Grand Cathay, it's not a bad idea. It's going to be able to pound into Minotaurs. And diving at Grand Cathay's backfield is uh, very, very hard now. It's it's hard because the Crowmen can swoop down and kill uh, things like Centigors and uh, Hounds and other cheap units that try and get into your backfield. So, yeah, certainly a bit of a tricky pickle. So, Cannon Fire going in, blasting into the Minotaurs here. Jade Warrior Halberds hanging out, Celestial Dragon Guard. It looks like the back objective is going to be flipping to Grand Cathay once again uh, with their prevalence of their infantry. And the Cannon is going to be able to start getting some nice saturated value as well. The middle objective going to be going to the Bray Herd. A lot of Minotaurs all over the battlefield just pulling back. Bray Shaman still cackling on his chariot, having accrued 2,000 value. I, I believe every Pit of Shades has been cast on um, on Celestial Dragon Guard, so it's going to be very cost-effective, right? So here, the Cannonball shooting from downtown, and uh, they're getting in there, hitting those Minotaurs pretty hard. Iron Dragon making his way to the middle, which is good. He wants to start grinding there. Honestly, maybe getting one or two more Breath Attacks on the Zangors, or just going straight into Dragon Form right now would be the play. 
In the backfield, we do get Peasant Horseman looking to uh, maybe chase down the Bray Shaman here. Wouldn't be able to do a whole lot, to be honest. But Cathay needs to just go all out for the middle now. Just sending both of these Celestial Dragon Guard and then reinforcing the back objective while you do that with like units from uh, Reserve. What is that cannon shooting? Okay, it's trying to get range of the Minotaurs, which isn't going to be bad. Butchers of Kalkin Guard heading towards the middle. Certainly going to be problematic. Those bad boys are very healthy. But remember, uh, Zhao Ming now has that fat heal. You know, he has a really, really fat heal here. So that boy is going to be able to uh, heal up. And it would be probably a mistake for Supertai to even try and get him down. But it's funny because these were some of the first games that all of us had played on the, uh, on the new build, right? So like we didn't... Uh, yeah, I think we knew about the Iron Dragon's heal at this point. So beautiful cannon fire. Grand Cafe cannons are no joke. Those Butchers of Kalkengard immediately get 25% of their HP hammered down. Morker is trying to get to the back objective, but Pwn did a really, really nice play, just kind of surrounding it with the uh, Peasant Horseman and just tar pitting him. That's how you deal with Morker, right? And this is also a nice play too. Leaving one Celestial Dragon Guard back and pushing the other one up, uh, you know, to make sure the Beastmen don't back cap you is certainly not a terrible idea. But man, these Pit of Shades have been nasty this game. There's going to be another one from Subutai, but those cannons also returning the favor uh, in a pretty serious manner. Crowmen coming out. Empress's Crowmen probably going to be seeing some sweet bombardments, I would imagine. So they're going to be on their way in. You definitely want to nail the Zangors if you can. Subutai going for that back pressure again. Knowing he's falling behind in value and Pwned is starting to pull, pull ahead, Subutai looks like he's going to be trying to hedge his bets and make sure that he wins on points, which is kind of his play style. I've played a lot of games with Subutai, and typically he likes to swarm all three objectives. And may, he may you know, be ahead of you on value, but even if he's behind, he tries to win on points. That's really, really his play style, and he's really good at it. Swarming those points. So Zangor's flooding over there. Here we do see the Peasant Horseman battling it out with Morker the Shadow Gave. Jade Warriors heading for the backside. And uh, more Jade Warriors moving here, but Witchers of Kalkengard can intercept them, and that certainly feels pretty bad. But this is where, like, a Crowman would be really good. Like, a Crowman out of Vanguard attacking the Butchers would be able to break them pretty quickly because of their light armor and the DPS on those bad boys, for sure. So Zhao Ming is in dragon form. Looks like he's going to be trying to goon that Bray Shaman. And uh, the Crowman have not engaged in combat. Looks like they're maybe thinking about doing a bombardment. Zhao Ming, the Iron Dragon, gets down there and most likely will get an attack to try and finish off that Chariot character and it looks like he does break that Chariot character. So it's going to be running. He's having trouble getting past his own Jade Lancers right now, actually. But yeah, man, Zangors with the speed and the armor and the durability really, really nasty up on that point. One Zangor unit does get broken here. And you see what I'm saying about Crowmen? Look at how hard they dunk on Razor Gores. Like they swoop down and that Razor Gore unit just got absolutely karate chopped. Absolutely karate chopped. So... Yeah, Cathay player, I think Cathay is going to be a solid, like, rock-hard, solid 50% win rate faction this season. Like, between 50 and 55. With the new tools they have, even though, um, you know, even though they may have lost a couple games today, they're still very strong. Very, very strong. So Peasant Horseman going to be cruising across. And on the back objective here, we do get the Onyx Crowmen looking to dive in here. Swooping in to clear things out. So Cathay getting a nice, speedy, stopping power. Jade Warriors have made their way up. Morker is still trapped, which, again, is a really good play. Just having those Peasant Horsemen tarp at him is... Uh, Mega cost effective, and in the middle, it looks like the Beastmen are going to be able to hold on to this point. So the Minotaurs hanging in there with their great weapons, bashing down these Jade Cavalry. Uh, the home objective for Grand Cathay, probably going to be retaken eventually. I mean, Pwn has pulled a massive value lead, guys. He's up 14.3 to 11.7. So Subutai at this point is basically in desperation, play the objective mode, which is certainly what you do. When you're behind in value, you play the objectives. You don't, like, you can try and grind your way back, but in this case, in his particular situation, I would say just going for the objective. So yeah. Crowmen doing work. Uh, they, they, the Arwar Crowmen, which is the one you saw, costs 850 gold. So it's not cheap. Um, whereas the basic Crowmen, which don't hit nearly as effectively, like there's a huge stat difference. 36 and 33 compared to 44 and 41, right? So Crowmen swooping down, going after the Zangors, uh, bashing through their shields pretty quickly. Iron Dragon able to fight off the Minotaurs to an extent. Jade Warriors uh, trying to get the objective back, but the Beastmen keep swarming up. Eventually, they're going to be losing it, but he's going to have to triple cap the Beastmen very, very soon. It's getting to that territory rather quickly. Uh, looks like Pwn did go for a little bit of a back cap or is attempting to, which is a good play when you're like kind of desperate for objectives. Sometimes people don't notice when their back objective is getting pressured like that. So now the Peasant Horsemen are going to be moving on to the back objective. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be trying to ninja. And if Subutai lets this slip, that's going to let Pwn right back in this game. Because Grand Cathay most likely will get their home objective back. They just have better quality troops here. Jade Warriors will finish off these Zangors. Iron Dragon will be able to eventually take down these Minotaurs. And even if he gets beat up, he's going to be able to heal with his new item, which is pretty nuts. So more Peasant Horsemen on the way out. Jade Warriors heading towards the middle. Going to be trying to push these Minotaurs back. He obviously doesn't want the Minotaurs bullying his old Warriors there. And this objective is getting danger close to flipping, actually. This is really big. What Pwn should do at this point is park his Horsemen on the side of the objective. And when these guys get close, what you do is you charge them, okay? And when you get the charge on those units, then uh, you'll have some of your cavalry on the objective and your opponent won't have anything on the objective. Granted, he still is probably going to get it because Peasant Horsemen have four capture. Wait, that was actually a really nice interference right there. 
using those peasant horsemen right there. So holds him back, and that objective is going to be flipping for Grand Cathay. Granted, it's taking them a little bit long to get their home objective back. We do see more horsemen coming in. We do also see Onyx Crowmen flying in to try and stop these Razor Gores. But yeah, it's taking them uh, just a ton of time to get through the new Zangors. Like Zangors, normal Beastmen would fold off an objective super quickly, but Zangors do not. They are able to fight hard on that point. They give you staying power, the Vanguard. It's really, really nasty. So on the other side, we do see the Peasant Horsemen colliding with Young War Spears. Pwn did back cap him right there, so that was a nice play, but it's going to be relatively short-lived. Those Spears are going to be able to clear him out, and back on the middle objective, we do see Halberds moving up, Jade Warriors, and uh, the Iron Dragon's healing is going to be gnarly. Dov, how excited are you? For, um, yeah, no, Crowmen are amazing, dude. They're super, super good. They're they're the best unit on Cathay's roster, in my opinion. Uh, Dov, how excited are you for Zhao Ming and Land Battle to instantly heal the full with his new item and have, like, 9,000 HP? You know you're excited, dude. Just, just you, you must be hyped for that. Uh, but, yeah, looking like it's not going to be enough time. Grand Cathay mounts a pretty good comeback in terms of value, but the Beast Men just got their dead to rights on the objectives. And... The thing that cost the, uh, the, the, the Cathay player the game that game was the initial fight. Uh, Professor Pwn invested in three crossbow units. That's, you know, about 1,800 gold that basically did nothing and just got killed immediately. So Cathay was fighting from behind, yet still managed to pull a value lead. Honestly, I think if Pwn had come in with either more infantry, uh, and what's crazy is, you can go with a Sky Junk now for Grand Cathay against Beastmen, and they cannot do shit. If they try and take down your Sky Junk, you just call in the Crowmen, and the Crowmen will kill Mance Cores, and it's going to kill Harpies, okay? So in this case, what you do is, you, I liked Pwn's build. 4,000 value on the Iron Dragon is solid, but um, no, Cathay doesn't need buffs, honestly. They're good. Um, you have to remember, like, we're in the early build... And obviously, there are skill level differences between some of the players that are playing, and everybody's kind of experimenting and memeing around. So it's it's not going to be the most accurate representation. Grand Cathay can absolutely take on Beastmen. You go with like a Halberd build, Mass Celestial Dragon Guard with the drum, and then you get a Sky Junk and protect it with Chromen, and there's nothing the Beastmen can do about your junk just sitting and bombarding them. So, um, yeah, so that's what's going to be going down. Honestly, even though Cathay did lose their games today, they're going to be strong. Oh, it did a lot for Cathay, trust me. I've been playing them. Uh, Yuan Bo is crazy good. You'll be seeing in replays coming up on my channel. And also the Crow Men are a game changer. Um, the Jet Lion is, is pretty bad in my opinion. And Yuan Bo and the Crow Men and the Drums are reason, reasonably viable. But the Drum is niche. Um, the Drum is niche for sure. All right, guys. So taking a look around, we do see the old Crow Men getting 1,800 value and 900 on that one. Really good. Cannon at 1,400 as well. And uh, taking a look here at the Beast Bend. Just solid Zangor push. Really, really nasty stuff. And uh, yeah, that's it. The Jet Lion should cost 100 gold less. They should be unbreakable and they should cause terror. And boom, then suddenly they would be a good unit. That's that's what I would say to fix them. So updating the scorecard. Subutai is going to be updated to one and one. All right. Old Cathay. Going to be paying the troll toll today. It happens to the best of us. Happens to the best of us. Lanterns or drum. The drum also gives harmony. Yeah, the drum does. Mm-hmm. And uh, looking good. All right, so next up, we're going to be doing Zinch versus Kislev. So let's get that battle ready to go. Thank you for joining. And uh, all right, where are we at? So we cut this, did that. All right. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Where are we at? Perfect, perfect, Anakin. Was that the one? No, that's not the one. Here we go. Okay. So we got the battle on. I got some new cool toys that you guys are going to be seeing in action here. So this is going to be myself versus Hadrius. Currently, my record in today's Faction War is 1-0. Hadrius is currently rocking 2-0. So if, if Hadrius is able to win this, certainly we'll have a good position here. So let's go ahead and get into the match. Here we are. What is the best way to get into the multiplayer scene? Uh, join my Discord, firstly. And shoot me a direct message and I can give you some tips. But really, I mean, honestly, just getting in our Discord and playing games on the map pack and joining some of our events is going to be the way. So, all right, guys, it's going to be myself on Zinch. And unfortunately, the Changeling is just not not really playable in multiplayer unless you want to turn into Kugath. So, sadly, you're not going to be seeing him a whole lot, probably in multiplayer outside of Kugath. Uh, but my build's going to be Halberd Spam because if you don't bring Halberds against Kislev now, you're going to get mulched by chariots and things in the woods and the elemental incarnate. So I just went mass Halberds, okay? And also, I have a Soul Grinder of Zinch to throw Javelins at Baba Yaga and Kairos Fate Weaver to cast Regrowth because I'm going not only for the Soul Grinder, but I'm also going to be bringing in the Mutilith Vortex Beast, potentially, and also um, Aeocold Hellbrass and other characters that certainly want healing. So 
So yeah, that's pretty much the jam. Halberds to deal with things in the woods. On the top, we do have Marauders of Zinch, going to be playing the top objective. Kairos is going to be my go-to lord this patch if I play Zinch. He's got Regrowth as well as Blue Fire. It's so good. Blue Fire is excellent at sniping, and Regrowth is very, very good here. So um, yeah, Bellacore is a decent option to turn into, too. It's a decent option. For Hadri's here, he's having a little bit of fun. Obviously, Baba Yaga isn't the ideal pick in this matchup. Uh, she's a little bit vulnerable to being sniped, but it's, you know, he's everyone today is kind of putting on some fun stuff here. So don't you stress it. Don't you stress it. Little Grom is a nice tool, really good counter against my Soul Grinder, and also good against any big targets I bring. For the rest of Baba Yaga's army, it is going to be Armored Kossars into the Sunset, Heavy War Sleds, and here's Baba Yaga in the woods. So Mother, uh, Mother Stank, Mama Stank, going to be dropping some Flock of Doom most likely. So what does she bring to the table? Flock of Doom is a great spell, and Feebling Foe is also very good. She has a Casket of Souls that she shoots at a relatively close range and does have Gulias. So Gulias is an AoE healing uh, activated ability. It can only be used, I believe, twice? How many uses? Or maybe infinite charges, I'm not sure. But it's not like a huge heal, but it's certainly not bad. So um, so yeah, Baba Yaga's in the woods. We've got some Zargard with great weapons. Let's get this party started and have some fun, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining. The cannon from downtown is shooting into the Chaos Warriors with Halberds, and uh, that certainly felt bad. Out of the gates, I was like, ooh, this is like a little bit scary. My Halberds getting dunked on. As far as my reinforcements go, don't worry, I have some new units. I have Zangors. I also have the uh, Mutalith Vortex, Vortex Beast, and Aeokold Hellbrass will be on his way relatively soon. Aeokold is an uh, absolute monster. He gets the job done. So high ground objective, Halberds going to be moving there, as well as Marauders of Zinch. Going to be parking my Halberds on the middle, but Kossar shooting is no joke. It's going to be able to wear me down a little bit. So going for heavy pressure on all three objectives. Marauders of Zinch on the far side, and we do have our uh, Javelin boy here. So the Soul Grinder is going to be trying to pick off uh, Baba Yaga, but she's over in the trees cackling like the evil uh, evil old hag she is. Going to be very cautious because obviously Hadri's immediately recognized I do have some uh, good sniping tools, right? Here we have Aeokold Hellbrass, so he's on his way out. He's going to basically be Sigvald for me on the middle point, and he's really excellent at just cleaving through armored infantry, and he's shielded against Kossar fire, so you just plop him down on the objective and you live your best life. Now, as far as the middle goes, the Halberds are moving into combat against the armored Kossars, but getting shot pretty hard and realizing, uh, you know, I wanted to keep these Halberds functional for a while, I am going to be slapping a regrowth down on them to try and keep them healthy. Now the bear slides are going to be moving in, but you don't want to mess with Kairos. Kairos does have Gaze of Fate, so he can certainly trap you down and do some good work here. Soul Grinder of Zinch going to be throwing its Javelin at Baba Yaga. But Baba Yaga gets nailed by the blue fire. Absolute brutality, making her certainly uh, very unhappy. So Gaze of Fate is down. We lock down the Heavy War Sleds, and the Heavy War Sleds going to be getting attacked by the Halberds here. So that's going to be a pretty big amount of damage that they do take. Kairos himself is a respectable armor-piercing fighter, and we do also have uh, the Halberds in there, you know, getting a little bit of bump and grind. Some more Halberds moving forward. Aeokold Hellbrass looking to engage in the front, so they're going to be charging into the Zargard with great weapons. And uh, the big chicken here, he's able to drag down a heavy war sled. So that's about 1,350 value that we snipe very early in the game, which we needed to, because if we didn't, you look at the value. The game is very, very even. As a matter of fact, Hadris is ahead of me on value. Baba Yaga is cackling over here and just basically riding down my units, so you can see she's on her sled and uh, certainly is going to be pretty menacing against these units. And she's a very, very good lord. I think this is a risky matchup for her, but matchups that don't have cannon, cannons are really good sniping effects. Uh, Baba Yaga is going to be an absolute terror. So she chases them back, and I don't know if... Yeah, there's her shooting attack. It's like a casket of souls. I was able to dodge it by running away unintentionally, but yeah, it can uh, it can do some nice damage for sure. So in the middle, we do have Aeokold Hellbrass fighting away, and he's an excellent tool against these, uh, these Zargard of Grey opens. So he's going to be cleaving through them with his uh, animations there. He has a really cool one, so let's watch. Yeah, there it is. See, he like levitates the sword, and then he like launches it at people and pulls it back like Thor. He's got some really, really cool uh, abilities. There it goes. Yeah, look at that. He like sends the sword out in like a vortex and pulls it back. He was really well designed, for sure. As haggard as the Zhanggu war drums are, Eikold is a really, really neat character. Now, this is where the game really gets a little bit scary for me. You got to remember how scary Kislev shooting is, okay? These armored Kossars are putting so much Daka into Kairos Fate Weaver, and I was like, how the hell is my big chicken dying? He's like a pretty tanky, not tanky, but he's got a lot of HP, and Hadri's basically just got his armored Kossars with their pistols and almost killed my big chicken, immediately pulling to a pretty big value lead. So Hadri's currently sitting at 4.9 against 3.9. I was like, oh my god, both of us are basically just getting us our lord zone this game. Baba Yaga is cackling at me too. Hadri's has been juking back and forth. Granted, she does eat a javelin to the face right there, but Baba Yaga on the uh, far side there is... Uh, Definitely doing some work. Her shot doesn't do that much damage against SEs. It's more designed against infantry, but even still, Baba Yaga is no joke. But now we call in Zangors. Zangors will trade pretty well into Armored Kossars, I would say. I think they're 
you know, I think in a straight up fight, the Zangor would beat a basic armored Kossar on a grind. If you've cast some spells and they have this, currently my spell intensity is 52%, so all my Zangors are getting 10% uh, damage, which is nice. Uh, and the Halberds, and honestly, yeah, in the middle, Aeacold Hellbrass able to help me take down Zargard, which normally I wouldn't be able to deal with easily. So Screamer's on their way in. Cairo's cackling up on the high ground as Aeacold Hellbrass fights it out in the middle. A couple Marauders moving for the backfield, so I was like, I need to shut down this little Grom. They're like, if I slip up on my micro for a second, I'm going to lose my big chicken. So my big chicken is currently hiding back in the trees, and uh, that boy is going to be just casting regrowth on himself basically the entire game. While Aeacold Hellbrass and company fight it out in the middle with the Zangors and whatnot, and uh, over here, trying to shut this down. Now, things in the woods have been called in. Zinch does have good answers for them. Uh, Screamers can definitely trade very well into them because of the magic damage surpassing the physical resist, but my Marauders aren't going to have a good time. So the things in the woods going to be bashing through these Marauders here, and uh, those bad boys going to be paying the iron price. Yeah, I absolutely just get in the business. So, yeah, good night, sweet Marauders. Granted, the Screamers are doing well. Baba Yaga cackling here in the back. She's going to be using the Enfeebling Foe to lower the stats of these. And again, the utility of the armored Kossar are so good. I mean, why do you even need other shooting? Like, you know, they, their shooting is so good. Look at them just melting this. And Baba Yaga does also use, I believe, a spell there. It looks like something went down. I'm not sure. But the things in the woods eviscerate my Marauders. Oh, it was a Flock of Doom. And then they're probably going to be turning around to go after my Screamers. But the entire time this is going down, Kairos and company fighting it out in the middle. Yeah, Cold Hellbrass doing some cool uh, Star Wars shit as he uh, uses the Force to project his lightsaber at people which is uh, certainly going to be an idea for upcoming thumbnails. Yeah, Aeacold only heals himself, uh, which honestly, he doesn't... He, with his regenerating shield, he's got like double regen. It's, it's pretty nuts. He's a very good character. Soul Grinder of Zinch fighting it out. It's still a good armor-piercing character, so using it against the very elite Zargard. Top ground objective being held relatively comfortably by us with those Marauders of Zinch. Halberd's up here, and Baba Yaga is just kind of having to be very cautious. So this game's been hard for Baba Yaga, but even still, she's probably gotten some okay value, about 500 so far. So yeah, this is... You know, the Zeech sniping squad is very good against her. Like, maybe just Kairos would be manageable, but I do try and net her down with Kairos to get the snipe. Uh, and she uses the Goulias in response, so that's going to be uh, providing some heals. And my blue fires, every single blue fire shot hits the tree. So truly, truly, Mother Ostankia is the uh, is the uh, the hag of the woods because the trees just saved her from basically dying. And Goulias able to heal her up, which is uh, certainly quite cost-effective. Now, Kislev does reflip the middle objective, and they're up in value, but remember, I actually have a lot of healing, right? So we've had two regrowths on Kairos. Uh, we've had regrowths, I believe, on the Soul Grinder, if I'm not mistaken. And Aeacold Hellbrass still duking it out. But it looks like Kislev is going to be maybe maneuvering for the high ground. Armored Kossar is moving here. Uh, Mother Stank is going to be heading there as well. Patriarch coming in. The Patriarchs can provide healing for Mother Stank, which is going to be very useful for kind of keeping her in the game. And she keeps rolling through the Chaos Warriors. And you can see her utility, right? She's able to really, really disrupt armored infantry. If, like, it wasn't a blue fire situation, Mother Stank would be a huge problem. But nice uh, Salax Lullaby right there. Going to be healing her up. She has a crazy big HP pool. Mother Stank has 7,000 plus HP, which is nuts. I mean, she's got about as much HP as a lot of the greater demons and stuff. So she's she's tough to drag down. Trying to fight my way back to the middle. Chaos Warriors with Halberds uh, backed up by Aeacold Hellbrass. So he's doing his best to get to the Zargard. And he's been one of the big wins for sure. Oh, there he goes once again with the Spinning Blade of Doom. Aeacold, uh, I can't quite see his value in the blob here. But he's at about 900 value so far. So the kit I brought him with... He costs uh, 1350 so he's not cheap, but even still, Aeacold is uh, he's, he's trying his best here. He's going to be fighting Zargard, which is very cost-effective. On the far side objective, I'm going to be trying to steal it. We have a Soul Grinder of Zinch and some Marauders here. They might be able to 2v1 this Armored Kossar unit. These Soul Grinders are still, you know, pretty tanky and have good combat stats and armor piercing. Uh, so I'm hoping to win that side objective. And also now we call in one of the big heavy hitters of Zinch. So we have the old uh, Severed Claw. So Severed Claw is going to be heading across and looking to grind down those armored Kossars there. And they for sure will. And when you put the Severed Claw somewhere, it takes a metric ton of effort to get them off. So that was kind of my plan for the long game, was to get objective three, because he's just got such a long, strong stranglehold on this middle objective. And even though Aeacold is trying his best, it's going to take some time. He also has things in the woods there. And once again, the armored Kossar pistol fire is nasty. I do pop another regrowth, but now Kairos is approaching uh, the healing cap. So that's a little bit frightening. We're not going to be able to heal for too much longer. Uh, armored Kossars and Mother Stank on their way up. Mama Stank, it looks like she's going to be dropping some Flock of Dooms up here on my troopers. We do see Screamers of Zeech descending on the Mordheim Brawler, so that's a very cost-effective fight for us. Magic anti-large attacks against units that like to rely on their physical resist. Basically anti-infantry, skin wolves, a or razor wars, essentially. It's kind of in that, that field of uh, expertise. On the far side here, we do get the things in the woods coming over to try and change the dynamic of this fight. And they might be able to put some pressure on us, but we do have spears as well as a big monster and severed claw. So I think overall, this fight is going to be a win for us. Severed claw could probably solo all the units on that objective. So I'm pretty comfortable with that situation right there. 
Now right here, we do have the Chaos Warriors with Halberds and Aeokold is just putting this middle objective on his back, really. He's been just cleaving through these elite Kisselbites because normally it'd be really, really hard to take down Zargard and whatnot. But um, yeah, he's doing it. Another Lullaby going down, so that's going to be healing up the Zargard. Very, very cost-effective right there. And uh, over here on Objective 1, we uh, do not have the point. It has been held by Kislev, but we are starting to route a lot of these units here. Marauders or Zangors on their way up. Zangors, of course, amazing. Like I said, uh, they're able to go fisticuffs with the Armored Kossars. And uh, honestly, they're pretty evenly matched, those two units. I feel like they're like very well-balanced against one another. Kyro is popping the Oracle of Eternity. Going to be giving them some sweet, sweet ward save. Things in the woods on their way back in. The Mordheim Brawlers. And uh, yeah, we're still desperately just trying to scrap for this objective. Calling in more Screamers. Screamers have good utility because they kill things in the woods. And their armor piercing isn't useless against armored Kossars if they have a little bit of infantry support like Zangors. Kyro is going to be pulling back for now. And I believe Mama Stank got popped. I think she was killed. Uh, when I was looking at another part of the battlefield, I'm pretty sure that Kairos was able to get her with the blue fire overcast. So I'm pretty sure that's what ended up happening there. Kislev is going to be top tier, hands down. They're going to be this top one or two factions in the game uh, post-launch. In, in Domination and Land Battle, it's probably still going to be Cathay because of how degenerate, you know, some of the new stuff they got in a box is. Because in Land Battle, you can kind of stay in a tight formation and not have to spread out. But Cathay is more balanced in Dom mode because they have to play the objectives. Soul Grinder here, getting nailed down by the Armored Kossars. Feels bad, but Severed Claw is going to be able to carry this one all the way into the Sweet Sunset. The elite middle linebackers of uh, Zinch will have the Armor Piercing to not only get through the Kossars, but also should be able to drag down the things in the woods. And really, really don't want to be losing my Soul Grinder here. This game is razor close, ladies and gentlemen. 12.9 against 12.4. Objective plays back and forth. It is a scrappy game of scrappy games, ladies and gentlemen. Screamers moving in, doing battle, and uh, the other Screamers here grinding as well. But you don't want Screamers fighting against, like, infantry. It's not the best thing if they're unsupported. By the way, how's the volume on the stream today? Uh, I'm, I've been kind of struggling with my volume set settings lately, so if it's uh, if it's good, let me know, and we can uh, we can continue and carry on. Hey, Town, welcome to the stream. So, more Chaos Warrior Halberds moving up in the middle. Guess who is putting this game on their back? Aeokold Hellbrass, baby. Whoa, did he just karate kick that guy? He just, like, like launched that guy away and then, like, karate kicked him. Okay. Screw the- Oh, he did it again! He, like, launched the guy away and then pulled him back with the Force! Dude, this guy is straight up a Jedi. No, he's like a Sith, dude. Look at him. Oh, that's so cool. Aeokold is such a rad character. So, I was wondering, like, I, I was looking at the top and I'm like, man, I can't break Hadri's position here. But then I looked at the middle and Aeokold had just, like, taken out the Zargard. 2400 value on this man! He's doing good. He's doing good, man. Yeah, the volume, I'm saying. Yeah, the volume is good. Alright, glad to hear it. Thank you. Severed Claw still fighting over here, cutting through these Armored Kossars. A couple Furies came in to help clean out the uh, things in the woods. Middle objective is going to be going to your boy Aeokold and the Soul Grinder, which we actually got a huge regrowth on. The regrowth there was pretty backbreaking for sure. The Kisselvite's going to be running out of steam a little bit. Dude, that was really, really cool. In the lore, his Windblade lets him fly. Oh, that's fun. That's really, really fun. Yeah, so it's going to be tough for Zinch. We just rewrote the Halberds, or to, for uh, Kislev here. We rewrote the Halberds. We get a nice blue fire from Kairos right down the pipe, bringing those Zargard down to half health. Blue fire is such an insanely good spell. And the giant chicken of change going to be doing some haggard floating animations as he tries to attack these units. Always a good time. And uh, our two characters await in the middle. The Soul Grinder, as well as Aeokold, should be able to put a bit of a beat down on the Zargard here. Although Kislev is going to be moving into two combat patriarchs. Granted, they are on horseback, which means they're not in their bear mount, so they don't have armor piercing. They're probably going to be struggling a little bit with Aeokold. There's 120 armor and 90 here as well. Yes, the Kislev Younglings are paying the price. Halberds and Spears on their way in. We don't have to really worry about Objective 3. I don't think it's really possible for him to get it from the Severed Claw and these Furies that are kind of chilling here. So now we just kind of need to deal with the last push of uh, Kislev here. Their last Zargard and Armored Kossars and all these bad boys moving in. We'll see what happens. So here comes the Halberds engaging Zargard. Zargard will win this fight head-to-head, -head, but the Halberds uh, do not stand alone. They're pretty healthy, and these guys are very, very beat up. You can see Aeokold and the Soul Grinder able to smash that Patriarch as more Marauders of Zinch move in, and Kairos Fate Weaver looking for a snipe. Most likely going to be going after one of the Patriarchs who's very damaged. Once again, Kossar shooting being my absolute bane this time. My absolute bane. Just crushing my big chicken. So he's going to have to fall back once again. And really, It's funny, we both had tools to screen the other's lords out of battle. Granted, Kairos has a pretty fat healing, so... He's able to kind of get away with it. But the Kislev Zargard getting broken here. Up in the high ground, we don't really have too many tools for getting this. What's probably going to end up happening is these Kossars will move to the middle objective. And then that'll give us an opportunity to try and ninja the top objective. But between Aeokold, the Soul Grinder, and Kairos, I think it's just too much. Furies are going to come in, get some nice rear charging. And uh, the Soul Grinder will beat up this Patriarch, no problem. Patriarchs are only good fighters if you put them on the bear. Because uh, then it gives them armor-piercing values with which they can actually penetrate the high armor of some of these big Zinch monsters and whatnot. So yeah, looking like they're out of steam. It's going to be a heavy war sled on its way in. Coupled Zargard, Chillin', Severed Claw have that objective on lock all day, every day. 
Tyrus, of course, ready to do a little bit of gooning. He's going to go help out and uh, keep an eye on that heavy war sled there. Kisselvite's moving to the middle objective. Going to be providing some nice cap weight for sure, but I have a lot of infantry on the middle point, and also I'm going to be getting more marauders, and Zangor is called out of reserve to try and head over there. And the high ground, now that Kislev has kind of left it, we're going to be sending some marauder spears up there as well. So they're going to be heading to that point. And, uh, oh my god, I'm just getting some water down the wrong pipe there. But uh, yeah, the sleds aren't going to be able to do it. Too many spears, too many halberds. Another blue fire going down to try and snipe that patriarch. He's going to be paying the troll toll. His screamers are hot on his tail. And uh, now we pull a value lead and also a points lead. And we do have enough to win on two objectives here. Kissel would have to do quite a bit. Things in the woods intercepted by Screamers. Screamers are an excellent counter against them. They, uh, like I said, surpass their 20% physical resist. Basically the same interaction with Skin Wolves. Granted, Skin Wolves do have anti-large, so they can fight back against Screamers uh, much, much more effectively. And that's going to be GG well played. So now we have a very interesting, interesting tournament on our hands, guys. The only, I believe there's only one game left to be played. Let's take a look at the brackets here in just a second. So Aeacold was the hard carry that game. Obviously the Halberds are good. 3,000 value on these Halberds. Holy shit. That's because they were the ones that killed the sleds with the Gaze of Fate. Kairos was clutch. Changeling would have just done nothing because he's, you know, not really playable in multiplayer outside of Kugath. Um, and Kugath is terrible against Kislev. They'll just shoot him with Kossar pistols and Little Grom and kill him. Uh, Screamers were solid as usual. Aeacold was the hard carry though. 2,800 value. Bashing down those Zargard in the middle, that was very, very clutch. Uh, for Hadri's army, Grant, Bobby Yaga didn't really get a chance to shine because of the sniping. Um, definitely Zinch isn't a matchup for her, but Hadri's was trying to put on a show for you guys. So he brought Bobby Yaga in at least one of his matches today. And uh, yeah, it was it was fun. It was fun indeed. Got some value here. Little dog's doing good there as well. And let us go ahead and head on over to the bracket. Update the scores and do it. All right, so Zinch is 2-0. and So I'm 2-0 and in the tournament. Hadri's is going to be ending his run with a 2-1 and one record. And now we just have one matchup left. It's going to be myself versus Subutai. So this is for all the marbles, okay? So if I end up winning this match versus Subutai's Beastmen, then I will win the tournament. If I lose to Subutai, we're going to have a three-way tie. And then, based on the rules of the tournament, uh, we would go to an FFA match, which would include Grand Cathay. And what we agreed on before the tournament is, if we did end up in a tie, it's a winner-takes-all FFA finale. So, if Professor Pone were able to come back with the steel chair, he could still win the entire tournament with Grand Cathay by winning the FFA match. So, um, yeah, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy indeed. So, let me get that next game ready for you guys. And uh, I got my water here. Just going to have a quick water break before we go. If you guys have any questions, now's a really good time. I can certainly answer them and uh, go from there. Thank you all for joining. If you're enjoying the stream, do drop a like as well. It's been a really fun one today. Today's tournament is more of a casual showcase, but I will be doing more competitive versions of this format. I think I think smaller faction wars are really fun with like the round robin format. Granted, we, if it were actually competitive, we wouldn't have an FFA ending but like on the table, but yeah. It's uh, it's it's an option, but again, if I just win this, then it's just over. So, please lose this next game, dude. You 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 don't know how good the Mutalith Beast is against the Beastmen. You just wait, dude. You just wait. Notice how the basic Hagwitch looks like Danny DeVito. It kind of does, yeah. Can the FF if I win, then the FF then there will be no FFA. Yeah. Subutai has to beat me. So if you guys want that, you got to root for him here in this next game, because he has to beat me. Otherwise, each is just gonna win. Because I would be the only undefeated player. Uh, how did they fix Grail Knights? Well, the problem with Grail Knights wasn't like their armor piercing and a buffs. They're, they're pretty cost appropriate. It's more so that they, they had the massive chariots. So Grail Knights had the massive chariots, so they could absolutely just run over halberds and not care. But now they don't. They, their mass has been fixed. Yeah. Yes. Do Miao uh, and Zhao got two new items? Yes, they did. They each got one new item in multiplayer. If Pwn wins the FFA match, Turin has to eat five hot dogs. I'm not going to throw this game. Although, yeah, we'll, we'll just get straight to it so you guys can uh, see the glory. All right. So there we are. And let's load into the game. All right, all right. So the time is now. Let's get this party started. We're loading into the last match of the day. It's going to be my Zinch versus Subutai's Beastmen. So Zangors, I know that Minotaurs and Razorgors are the win con for Beastmen, so I'm going Halberd heavy. It's actually the exact same opening as the last build, which the Soul Grinder is, 
It's funny because the meta for the Beastmen for the entire last patch was using, you know, Ray Shamans on Chariots. So I brought a Soul Grinder to snipe it with Kairos, but he didn't bring it. He actually brought Morker, which really, really threw a bit of a loop in my game there. So, so here it comes, baby. Let's get it going. Let's have some fun. The battle is on. The battle is on indeed. So Kairos Fate Weaver versus Morker the Shadow Gave on the Proving Grounds in today's Faction War. Well, we'll see. We'll see, Chris. You never know. I could be throwing a little bit of loop in there to fool you guys. You got to just wait. Thoughts on the big moose the giant thing Kislev have? It's really good. It's really good. All right, guys. Here we are on Proving Grounds. My build's going to be Chaos Warriors with Halberds because they will probably beat Zangors. They will beat Minotaurs. They will beat Razorgors. A little bit weak against, you know, Ungor Raider, Focus Fire, and Magic. But aside from that, they're very good against Beastmen. Soul Grinder is there to cause terror and snipe Minotaurs and things like that. And Kairos Fate Weaver is there to party as well. Now for the Beastmen, it is going to be a Zongor build. So Zongor is in the front line, backed up by Ungor Raiders. Let us know who you guys are uh, cheering for here. But it is going to be Ungor Raiders into the sunset with Morgur. A really nice tech because Zinch is one of the best sniping factions in the game. So bringing a Lord that basically is unsnipable is a really, really good call. Now looking on the other side, more Zangors. Beastmen just going to be swarming up on these objectives, trying to make it very difficult for me to grab them. So the first thing we're going to be calling in, I believe Aeacold makes his way in this game. I think he does. I can't remember. Uh, but Kairos is just scouting around in the woods. So I'm just kind of like peeking. I do use a blue fire there on some of those Ungor Raiders, knowing how problematic they're going to be. And my initial game plan is to just play objective number one and play objective number two in the middle as well. So Zangors are uh, preparing to engage. It looks like they want to fight my Halberds, but Ungor Raiders are so good. And honestly, I didn't really have much counterplay for this. I was kind of like, God damn, I guess I just got to absorb that ammunition. Kind of made me wish I went with Shielded Warriors. But the thing about Shielded Warriors is they get plowed by Razorgors and Minotaurs. So it's a bit of a tricky conundrum you get stuck in as uh, playing old Zinch here. Double Chaos Warrior Halberds holding down on this side. And now the first time on today's stream, ladies and gentlemen, it is going to be the Mutilith Vortex Beast. This thing is a raid boss. So it does have the Tides of Transformation, which uh, basically is uh, applies disoriented to nearby units and does AoE damage. It has the Aura of Mutation, which is the top tier Mortis Engine. It's the exact same strength as old Kugath, and he does give uh, melee attack to nearby units. The Mutileth Beast is really good. I highly recommend it, especially against factions like... It's good against factions like Beastmen, but the strongest combo is going to be using Mutilith with Kairos, because he can heal it with Regrowth, or Mutilith with Changeling turning into Kugath. That is typically how you're going to play it. So finally, I saw my prize. We see the Bray Shaman to the Shadows, and we're going to be tagging that bad boy with some blue fires. And a lot of the shots do miss there. I was a little bit disappointed. We also pop Gaze of Fate. I figured let's get in there and try and take down his Pit of Shades. But there is going to be a fat Pit of Shades right there, which sadly, I'm not going to be able to dodge super well. That was a nice cast by Subutai. Granted, it's a little far back, so my Warriors don't get caught super hard. But now the Warriors have engaged in the front line, and the battle is going to be underway. Let's get the Mutilith Beast here. He's going to be grinding away with his uh, nice Mortis Engine attacks and what would appear to be a really good attack animation against infantry. Yeah, he's got that huge claw. And yeah, he's Mortis Engineing all these Beastmen down now. So Zangors are disoriented, Ungors are disoriented, and those Mortises are cackling. And we almost sniped Subutai's Bray Shaman right away. And I know if we can get rid of the Pit of Shades, he's going to have a much harder time dealing with my Halberd. So Zinch Army ability going down, but it did miss the Bray Shaman, which felt pretty bad. Now we're going to be getting a Death Star of our uh, big monsters. So Soul Grinder as well as the Mutilith Beast going to be engaging versus Chaos Spawn. But for some reason in my mind, I thought they were Minotaurs, but they were the fake Chaos Spawn summoned from Worker, so I really should have just ignored those. So realizing the Ungor Raiders are one of the big problems right now, I'm going to be sending Kairos after the Raiders, because man, Tsubutai has been punishing me so hard with Raiders, uh, softening up my Chaos Warriors, really allow allowing them to take quite a bit of damage. Halberd's holding here on this side against Zangors. Minotaur is going to come in, and obviously though the Halberds are good against multiple units here, they're going to get overwhelmed. Those Minotaurs and those uh, Zangors and the Raider Fire just all combining in to do quite a bit of damage against my bad boys. But our SE Blob is quite nasty. But the issue is on this map, it's not a map that you can just fight on one objective. You have to play all three. So that's what we're going to start doing. We too have Zangors of our own, ladies and gentlemen. Zangor is going to be hustling in there. Moving into objective number three, looking to do some fisticuffs battle. And yeah, Zangors will bash Ungor. So, you know, two can play the Zangor game, ladies and gentlemen. Two can play that game indeed. So Mutilith Beast getting popped a little bit by Raider Fire. As far as value so far, it's gotten about 500 with its Mortis Engine. It's been doing some respectable work. More Zangors coming in from reinforcements. Kairos going to be slapping a fat regrowth down on that giant Mortis Engine Beast, which is going to be a little bit scary. But the Beastmen are certainly pressing the objectives hard. Objective number one of the far side is still owned by my forces. I have some very, very stalwart halberds here. And you see what I'm saying about Zangors losing to Chaos Warriors of Zinch? 
uh, with halberds, they do a great job. So those Chaos Warriors holding that objective, but the Beastmen might be able to flip it. I don't have any reinforcements coming. Middle objective is owned by my Xenchian forces as well. Pit of Shades from Subutai going down on the Zangors, but it looks like it was a miss. My Zangors were able to dodge that and chase the enemy Zangors. The Mutal of Vortex Beast anchoring it down with the Soul Grinder. Soul Grinder hasn't been that great this game. I haven't had the opportunity to snipe. Uh, too many things with Morker. I believe the Bray Shaman uh, of, did get killed on the Chariot. I think I got a blue fire on it while it was scurrying around. Side objective, we're trying to get this one. Uh, we do have the Zangors battling, but he flan flanks me with more and more of these bad boys. So overall, it looks like I'm going to be losing out on this side. The objective call in, we got Chaos Warriors with Halberds coming up, as well as Marauder Spears to deal with all the Beastmen mass and monsters and different things like that. Mutalith Beast in the middle being an absolute raid boss. It's taking down Razor Gore Herds, more engineering Chaff Units and Zangors, eating a lot of Missile Fire. You can see Kairos is working overtime to try and shut this down. And even though I am behind on value by about a thousand, my healing is pretty off the chain. So the value on this map is actually very, very close at this point. I would say we're more or less dead even in terms of value. Screamers flying in there trying to help out. The Beastman Army uh, certainly not happy about that Mortis effect. This thing's sitting at about a thousand value right now. Soul Grinder. A little bit beat up as well, but Morker is grinding in there with his Pimp Claw and doing some pretty respectable damage against all my different units here. More Screamers on the way in. I thought about diving them into the Ungle Raiders out of desperation. But Kairos going to be doing disruption, and now these Screamers going to be attacking these Minotaurs on the ground with their anti-large attacks. On the side objective, it looks like we might have some hope of flipping it. Our Chaos Warrior Halberd's getting in there, providing some uh, nice support, and the Marauders of Spears will help against the Razor Gore. So there's a small chance we maybe flip this objective. Because now the Beastmen are really taking over on the points, which is something they do very, very well, especially with some of the new toys that they do have. Chaos Warriors with Halberds fighting versus Minotaurs. These Chaos Warriors with Halberds fighting well also. This objective is starting to go in our favor, but it's not by that much. It will certainly give the Beastmen some time to respond. And we do have a bit of a blob fight here, kind of trying to keep Kairos and my big SEs together. Regrowth going down on the Mutalith Beast to keep uh, my hard carry piece going. And it's certainly working. I mean, you notice the Beastmen army in the middle is starting to look a little bit tattered, right? We do have... Uh, some Ungor Spears and some Raiders, but overall it's looking a little bit dicey for those bad boys. But this is going to be a beautiful cast here from Subutai. He did re-summon his Bray Shaman, I believe. He brought it back from death. Uh, it was an expensive investment, but certainly worth it, as he gets an excellent, excellent Pit of Shades right on my army. Just nastiness, absolute nastiness. So the Mutalith Vortex Beast is going to be on its way in, looking to grind down with some of these units. And here comes the big man. Going to be clawing with his anti-large attacks, and we do see the Razor Gore Herds and uh, other ones getting ready to buckle. So I figured let's send him off to the side and see if he can wrestle me this objective. As far as reinforcements, my call-ins are going to be Chaos Warriors with Halberds, and that was my most recent call-in for the Beastman. It's going to be just Ungor Herds and Chaff Units trying to overwhelm me with Capture Weight on the points. Soul Grinder of Zinch has been the biggest disappointment in this game for sure. Uh, he's been in a little bit of trouble. Currently, he's going to be sitting at only 500 value, just kind of getting bashed by these big monsters. So that was the weak link. I think that Kairos maybe is enough sniping to take down like a Bray Shaman. The Soul Grinder, you probably don't really need it. And if you're going Mutalith and Soul Grinder, what I really felt this game is I didn't have enough capture weight to really contest with the Beastmen here. You know, but the the, 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 Mutus, the, Mortis, the Mutus engine, yes. The Mortis engine might be able to get us back. Hey, thank you for the 50. Zinchi and Time Zone shenanigans often prevent me from catching you live. but thought I'd drop some support. I really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Mutalith Beast up to triple chevrons. This thing's starting to get pretty bananas here. 2,200 value. So it's paid for itself. It costs 2,000 gold, and it's going to keep getting value for me this game. Still sitting at about 5,000 HP as it does get mass terror routes on this objective. You can see many of the Beastman units here are being drained and are running in droves. Ungor Raider's doing some work. I do drop the Zinch Army ability to try and hit the blob that was around Kairos. And maybe we could have dropped it on the Mutalith Beast, but the Ungor Raiders were also blob there also. So I thought that would be the better play. But in retrospect, having seen the replay... Uh, I think, you know, dropping it on this big blob here on the objective would have been a little bit of a stronger play. But you know what? We all make mistakes. Side objective, we do have a couple spears. Might be able to flip that one. No pressure going there. Chaos Warrior Halberd's moving up to the middle. Going to be chasing down these Ungor Raiders, keeping them from getting too crazy. And uh, our SE blob here with Kairos as well as the Mutalith Beast are fighting tooth and nail to try and get this point. Mortis Engine has gotten him up to 2,600 value this game. So you can see how damn good that Mutalith Beast is, especially with healing. Without healing, it can die pretty quickly. It's weird. It, I, I feel like it kind of is a little bit slow to maneuver, so it can get picked off and kind of trapped up by Archer Fire. But overall, it's been a menace. Supertai coming in with the Bray Shaman once again. He's going to be dropping some fat Vortexes of Doom right on top of the Marauders. And that, oh man, the Bray Shaman's back. Oh man, maybe he never died. He must have died. I, I'm pretty sure I killed him earlier. Either that or Super Chai just got away with him and resummoned him and then maybe I gooned him again. I'm not sure. Look at the Mutalith attack animation. Did you see that? It knocked everything down around it. That must be that uh, activated or that, that passive one that it has. Man, yeah, what an absolute raid boss of a monster. 3,000 value on the Mutalith Beast. 
The Bray Shaman character is going to be trying to run away, but uh, Kairos, I finally had enough Winds of Magic to snipe him again. So Kairos is going to be using a Blue Fire to try and uh, take that bad boy down. As far as the value lead, Beastmen are pretty far ahead, but with the multiple regrowths, I would say it's pretty even. Huge blast there. The Bray Shaman gets sniped by the Zinchi and Magic. On the middle objective, we're getting a little bit of cap weight here. Calling in Screamers of Zinch to attack here, and it looks like there's going to be a counterattack of Centigors and Minotaurs, both of which are good targets for our Screamers. Halberd's moving into the middle, and uh, we do have a good fight on our hands there. On the far side objective, the Tattered Zangors are making their way back in, but Subutai did dispatch that push, so these Zangors and whatnot able to get the job done there. And the middle objective, unfortunately, isn't flipping to us fast enough, and that clock is ticking, and this has really been the playstyle we've seen from Zangors and Beastmen. Even though they might not be crushing you in outright value, it's really, really tough to wrestle those objectives from them. So here we get a little bit of cap weight, but more Haggard units are on the way in. Hopefully the Mutalit Beast will get it done and Mortis Engine them down. 3,400 value on this man, dude. 3,400. Kairos currently sitting at about 1,300 from his Blue Fire spam. But mostly has been regrowths. Chaos Warrior Halberds on the far side of the map. Going to be heading to Objective 1 to try and flip that for the Beastmen call-ins. Looks like it's mostly just Desperation Chaff units to try and maintain capture weight and keep us off the points. Because these Chaos Warrior Halberds are actually bullying the Zangors and or they will be soon. Moving on to the point with the Soul Grinder as well as the Marauder Spears. And here it looks like there's going to be another big Witchcraft going down. So that is going to be, I believe, the Zinch Army ability to try and force them off. But I just don't have a lot of cap weight here. I just have the Beast Zinch Army ability doing huge damage against those Razor Gores. But I don't have any like unit like units nearby. I need some Zangors. I need something like that because Subutai's Morker. He's he's the ultimate, the OG. I, I never hear that bell, right? He is just going strong. Uh, so yeah, he's holding it in there. I do have the Mutalith Beast and some units on their way in. Beast Ben completely routed on this side. As far as the middle objective goes, we do get the Marauders of Spears battling against Centigors. Halberd's holding it down as well, but we are going to need a triple cap. So I'm desperately, desperately playing all three objectives. We're going to find out in the fourth quarter. I'm sure all of you guys are rooting against me because you want to see the dreaded FFA to decide who wins the tournament. But um, you know, I, of course, want to win. So Chaos Warrior Halberds on their way up, going to be moving in with these Screamers and looking at the middle objective. It is flipping our way, and I did start to feel that I was kind of like getting a lot of momentum, and the Beastmen were really kind of ragged all over the battlefield here, but I like they have so many like little fast speed units just trolling me, and uh, Morker just won't go away, dude. He's been such a troll. So trying to use the Mutalith Beast to terror out these Destroyers of Drakwald while I can. Mutalith currently sitting at 3,900 value. Screamers being called in out of desperation because most of my Zangors are on the battlefield right now, so they're not able to uh, get in there and, you know, answer. I probably should have maxed out on them. Soul Grinder of Zinch actually getting popped, but does get a clutch regrowth in the fourth quarter from Kairos. Might be able to keep this thing going. You know, terror routes are going to be good, and also the beast itself provides a little bit of capture weight on the objective here, so hoping I'll be able to hold that down. Over on objective number one, we do have Screamers of Zinch battling it out and a full health unit of Chaos Warriors. So you can see kind of the inevitable push, right? Like eventually the Halberds would get through here. Eventually we get the middle and eventually we get objective one. But ladies and gentlemen, we ran out of time. That is going to be it. And with that, we're going to the grand finals and it is going to be an FFA to decide the winner of today's four-man mini faction war. Well played to Subutai. He taught me a good lesson about that map and that playstyle. On that map, you can't go so elite because if you do, what happens is you get swarmed. I think the uh, I think my build was good. I think you just cut the Soul Grinder, uh, replace it with a Mutalith Vortex Beast in your opening build maybe, and then bring in more infantry in lieu of using the um, in lieu of using the Soul Grinder. The Soul Grinder was a huge thing that set me back. All right, guys, it is time for the dreaded FFA because I'm going to show you why. So the current standings for today's tournament, I went two and one, Subutai went two and one, and Hadri's went two and one as well. And Professor Pwn is getting a lifeline from the grave for the dreaded FFA and oh baby, I had a hard time hiding the FFA from you guys all stream, but it's coming. And the blue scribes are gonna be there, the changeling is gonna be there, all the memes are gonna be unleashed. So everything you guys have been having power fantasies about seeing today is going to be there in the Grand Finals. Chaos Knights are okay against Beastmen. I don't think they're that good because they get wrecked by Razor Gores and by Minotaurs. Against his build, they might have been good because although he had Minotaurs and Razor Gores, so... Pwn is back from the grave, dude. He is back from the grave. Oh my god, I'm so excited for this. I'm so excited. This FFA is winner takes all. It's winner takes all, baby. Okay, so let me delete that, and now we get in for the FFA Finals. Holy shit. You guys are going to love it. And it's... <laughs> this FFA was so good. It was so good, dude. Oh, man. You guys are in for a treat. I was having so much trouble hiding this from you the whole stream. The excitement. You know? The excitement. All right, guys. 
My army is the changeling, the blue scribes, the dreaded cock, a soul grinder, uh, a mutilith vortex piece, and severed claw. Hadri's with double little Grom. Uh, he does have the elemental incarnate as well as the bear, mother of Stankia, and two of the patriarchs in Zargard. The builds are absolutely hog wild here. Absolutely hog wild. I play games. Thank you for the five. Blood for the blood god, money for the sportscaster. Hey, thank you, man. Unsubscribe to the resubscribe. <laughs> yeah. We could put it to a vote if you want. Although I think I think you guys got your favorites. We're good. Watch this be the one game. Yeah. It is time. The changeling is here. There's only a couple things the changeling can turn into that are actually worth it. And one of them is going to be used here as well. So prepare yourselves. Prepare yourselves. I went with the MOBA build. <laughs> oh man, this is going to be fun. My build's for, it's a monster mash. Because the, the cockatrice does lower... Um, it lowers melee attack, so it's really good for blob fights. Okay, so we're going to do a quick breakdown of all my armies. I'm going to be representing Zinch, as we have all day. The Cockatrice is here. Really nice for blob fights because it lowers speed and melee attack. Severed Claw are excellent at fighting monsters. We got the Blue Scribes, baby. So every single time you cast a spell with the Blue Scribes, it gives you a new set of six spells. It is so hilarious. And honestly, it's going to be, it's going to be a blast. It's going to be a blast. Okay. Who do you guys think I'm going to be turning into right now? Let's see the first... The first person who gets it right, we'll give you we'll give you a shout out here. Who do you think we're going to turn into with the changeling? I'm going to be watching chat. We got a soul grinder and a mutilith feast because it's anti-large and it's pretty good at killing things. Okay, I'm watching chat for a second. Let's see if any of you guys get it right. There's no reason to keep the changeling as himself, unfortunately. No, there's absolutely no reason. So he's not even my caster. He has no spells. Um, okay, I see a Kugath guess. Uh, I see Tretch. Oh, Nep Nep wins. Scarbrand, baby. Nep Nep got it. Nepnep was the first one. Congrats to you. Man, you got that. You guys got it quick. I didn't think you'd guess Scarbrand that quickly, but it is going to be Marlon Scarbrando. Oh, man. A lot of good <laughs> Tretch. No, I actually wanted to win this. I'm not going to do Tretch or Greases. I was close to doing it. Yeah, you got it. it it's, it's, you guys got it. Nepnep wins. Chris, good to watch after this. Uh, super hype for the FFA. Okay. So, for Professor Pwn, he's got Jade Warrior Halberds. The Terracotta Sentinel, Yuan Bo, the Executioner, Felix Jaeger, the Empress's Crowman, and several cannons. So a very, very defensive position, okay? On the other side of the map, we have a good old uh, Subutai, the Lord of the Beastmen. So he's got Malagor, the Dark Omen, with Flock of Doom and Enfeebling Foe. The rest of the army is going to be very infantry-centric, but we have two Beasts of Chaos. We have two Beasts of Chaos. We have the Incarnate of Elemental Beasts being brought, as well as the Jabber Slife. So a fair amount of infantry, but also some monsters as well, which is going to be very fun. It is going to be very fun. Somebody said Donald Trump. <laughs> That's hilarious. Hadrius has a really nasty army as well. The Elemental Incarnate. Um, it is going to be backed up by Double Patriarch, uh, Mother Ostankia, and uh, Elemental Bear, the Frozen Heart of Winter. So we basically all just went all out with our Haggard units. So I did not want any piece of Cathay's formation because cannons, bows, you know, different things like that. I wanted to have a knockdown drag out fight with the Beastmen. So... We'll be focusing a little bit more on this duel for now, obviously, and then we'll switch between the other fights every now and then. Two Incarnates. So the Blue Scribes do have a little shooting attack. It's really terrible, but I figured I'm like, let's get in there and do a little bit of Daka, see if we can, and take some pot shots over at the Incarnate of Elemental Beasts. Uh, I don't remember all the spells I got, but yeah, there's you see the little missile there? It does hit. I mean, it did something. It does at least light him on fire, but... Yeah, I think this spell cycle, I got like Skitter Leap and like, like a couple really terrible spells. So I was pretty sad about that. But, you know, you can't win every time. The the Blue Scribes are just such a gambling piece. It's it's really fun. Uh, the Changeling just running about. You know, I, I told the players I was playing with, I'm like, okay, don't look at what I picked with the Changeling. I want you to be surprised when I get them. So they don't know what's coming. But the Changeling's going to be rolling up and the Beast Ben and Zinch going to be colliding. I do have really nice debuffs, but he does also have the Elements on Carnet, a War Gore, and uh, a little bit of supporting spears on the ground. So that is one advantage that he certainly does have there. So the Changeling, uh, I'll show you how he works after the game specifically, but you pick a Lord pre-battle, and that's who you can turn into. And then you're just stuck as that Lord the entire game. So so yeah, we're going to be duking it out. Sever Claw moving up, and uh, what's really nice is the Mutilid Vortex Beast also has a melee attack aura. So he gives plus 8 melee attack to all my units here. So the Changeling is just cackling here. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, it's mainly just a cannon duel, so not much to miss here. Um, it looks like Hadris is using his two little Groms with the healing to shut down Professor Pone's cannons. So they're having a little cannon duel, but not too much to go uh, with all that. That's really just what's going down here. 
So pulling back into our blob formation, we'll do a little bit of fast forwarding while the two armies posture here. And now there was some witchcraft flock of doom going down on Severed Claw, but they don't really care about it. They're a low model count unit, so it's not going to do too much in the first place. Severed Claw going to be bashing through these units. And now the Mutalith Vortex Beast is getting in here and he's getting down and dirty. Cockatrice also popping in and now blood for the blood god, skulls for the skull throne, the changeling turning into Scarbrand. One of the scariest duelists in the game. So now I got Marlin Scarbrando, and suddenly the Beastmen are like, oh shit, I have to deal with Scarbrand also. So Scarbrand is here, and I'm really hoping that I get abilities with the Blue Scribe that give me access to healing. So Scarbrand going to be going and doing battle with the Gorbel, immediately knocks over the Gorbel. Soul Grinder is there, Mutalith Beast as well, and we have an absolutely terrifying goon squad here. You can see the Gorbels are getting smashed. And look at this, the Blue Scribe is going to be casting a spell, Death Frost, from the Lore of Kislev, from the Blue Scribes, Lore of Ice. And now I have a new set of spells, so hoping to get something good. Scarbrand does get hit by the Jabber Slife, but we have the Mutalith Beast. We have the Dreaded Cock down here, which is going to be attacking with its uh, armor-piercing attacks and poison. Death Frost going down, and we have a disgusting, chaotic blob battle. So it's getting down. And yeah, Scarbrand's able to karate chop the Jabber Slife pretty well. I do use Rage Embodied from Corn from Scarbrand, to rampage a lot of these units, and that Jabber Scythe is getting bashed. Meanwhile, up in the sky, we have the ultimate duel of fates. It is the Blue Scribes duking it out with uh, old Malagor here. And we use Curse of the Midnight Wind. So that was another spell we got, which is actually really good here. It lowers the melee attack of the entire Beastman blob, right? So Jabber Scythe getting its stats lowered. The Blue Scribes have honestly been pretty clutch. They've been pretty clutch this game. In the meantime, Grand Cathay rolling up behind me, guys. And Big Mama Stank is up in the hills also, dropping some spells and magic and Flock of Dooms down in the fight. So Mama Stank and Kislev is on its way over. Grand Cathay is on its way over. And this is certainly going to be the epicenter of combat. So the Jabber Scythe is already dead, guys. Scarbrand, the Cockatrice, as well as the Soul Grinder were able to get in there and just absolutely beat down that thing. So that was huge value for us. One monster of ours that is taking a bit of a beating is the Mutalith Vortex Beast. It's been fighting off Subitai's Incarnate, as well as the Wargore on the ground. So there's been a fair amount of good units there. And Professor Pwned coming in with the dreaded Empress's Crowman. And look at the damage they're getting on Malagor the Dark Omen. I was so happy about this because Malagor had been chasing my Blue Scribes the entire game. So I was like, oh, freedom. I'm free at last. But yes, the Empress's Crowman getting a little bit of value. I do have the points lead, but Subitai isn't that far behind me. Certainly very, very close. The Mutalith Vortex Beast probably going to be going down. But the Gorbel getting smashed by Scarbrand as well as the Cockatrice. And the Soul Grinder, very, very good fighting potential as it looks like... Oh, Fog of the Damned goes down. So I got Fog of the Damned with the Blue Scribes. Uh, AoE debuff spell. So I just keep casting all these different debuffs on that blob and trying to get what I can. Oh my god, the Hand Grenades of Nangao. Nasty damage, but look at this. Who would have ever expected, okay... The zombie summons from Zeech. So the blue scribes got raised dead. So I just slapped down some zombies to support my monsters. And man, Professor Pwn's bombardment just instantly killed those Ungors. Meanwhile, the Empress's Crowmen going to be hunting down the blue scribes up in the sky. And we are chasing after the incarnate of Elemental Beast. So Scarbrand, as well as the Changeling. I mean, the Changeling, oh, it's so confusing. And the Soul Grinder of Zeech are going to be hunting down the incarnate. Unfortunately, my Mutalith Beast is pretty much out of the picture. It did well. It got 2300 value at the end of the day. But now, on to Mother Stank. So Mama Stank on the far side, she's just kind of cackling up to 1,500 value. She has just been sitting up here, shooting into the blobs with her uh, with her bombardments and using Flock of Dooms. And oh, with the Spirit Bear. Yeah, he was launching the Spirit Bears and getting good work here. Professor Pwn's army, very, very slow to move over. So Yuan Bo is hustling. So is the Terracotta Sentinel, looking to get involved in combat. Meanwhile, the epicenter of fighting is over here. So uh, we're still hunting. The Cockatrice trying to chase down the Incarnate. I do not want Subutai to get away. He's the closest to me in points. So I know that I need to get in and try and shut this bad boy down, right? Because if he can re-rally and get his forces together, we're in trouble. Elemental Bear Breath Attack from Hadrius. Very, very nice. Able to take down a lot of health off those Ungors. And now Hadrius is going to be coming in to farm some points as Grandma is going to be going ape shit. So Grandma's on her way over. But check this out. We use the Pavane of Slanesh, I think. No, Rage Embodied from Scarbrand. Yeah, having a Rampage on Zinch is pretty sweet. So we rampage the Elemental Incarnate, and it's going to be getting taken down by our Goon Squad. Scarbrand and the Cockatrice going to be finishing off this monster, most likely. 109 HP, one more attack should finish it. It is broken. It has super good leadership, but it can break and fall. Oh, look at the animation. Like, the spirits of the wild, like, emerge from it. Oh, that's really cool. So the Blue Scribe's also cackling. So we have our Death Star now. Severed Claw is still alive. Looking here, Baba Yaga is just trolling this whole game, dudes. She's just running around with her sled, just cackling an old hag. And dropping the stank shots on these guys. And honestly, she's up to 1,600 value so far. So Mama Stank really being disruptive as she runs around uh, using her Casket of Souls. Pulling them and luring them into the Elemental Bear. Pwn with the rear charge from the Empress's Chrome. And looks like there's going to be some magic going down. Gulias is going to be healing Mama Stank as well as the Elemental Bear. And the bear just protecting big Mama Stank. 
and bashing down the Butchers of Kalkengard. Meanwhile, Hadri's uh, Elemental Incarnate does get beaten down by my Scarbrand Goon Squad. So Car Scarbrand's sitting at 992 value here, the Changeling, as he just womps on this Elemental Incarnate. He's going to be running into the Healing Severed Claw move again. And now Yuan Bo's going to be hustling over. So Professor Pwn going to be looking to execute some characters with his Dragon. The fun thing about Yuan Bo, guys, is that he has a targeted executability. Okay, hear me out. He executes targets that are below 20% with an activated ability, but what a lot of people don't know about old Yuanbo is he has a standard execute as well. When units are below 20%, he has the executioner ability. I don't know where it is on the tooltip, but um, when units get low, he can execute them with his auto attacks as well if they're below 20%. There's like a chance of it happening. So he's really, really good, especially in like a hero hammer game like this. So disgusting blob fight here. Uh, Scarbrand's in there duking it out, but the Elemental Bear is laying a bit of a beat down on the Changeling, aka Scarbrand. Soul Grinder and the Cockatrice are going after the Elemental Incarnate. I'm basically just trying to get as many points as I can. Blue Scribe gets the job done. Now there's going to be some magic going down. Yes, Heart of Winter. And we see Yuan Bo coming in with 1,000 weapon strength. Yuan Bo beating down the Changeling. 1,000 weapon strength there for several attacks. It was really, really nasty. And then he tail whips the Changeling once again. So pretty crazy stuff. Over here, we do see the Blue Scribes hustling across. The Heart of Winter down, slowing it down a little bit. But Blue Scribes are actually not terrible in combat. They do have some decent AP values. The Heart of Winter pretty much clears out most of the infantry. Try my best to goon down the bear with the Cockatrice and Scarbrand, just getting as many points as I can. I know that the Changeling probably is going to be dying with some of these other characters right here. So we're just trying to drag down the beast with the Severed Claw and company. And overall, the Changeling is in big danger. Um, he's probably going to need to run away at this point, although... I guess we just go and look at that. I got the Skaven Wither spell. That's what I got with the Blue Scribe. So just casting Wither here. Mama's Tank just being the evil hag witch, just casting uh, witchcraft and cackling and shooting from her sled. Hadrius does still have some little Groms up on the high ground and some shooting downtown. So he's been shooting with his little Groms this entire time. Uh, pulling pretty close to second place here, but so far the Changer of Zinch uh, did some good work. But Scarbrand is going to be falling to Yuan Bo here as Yuan Bo comes in for the executing blow and uh, he's hitting at about 300 HP. So. Hey, yeah, good night, sweet changeling. You did good, man. You know, the changeling got 4,000 value so far from Scarbrand. Oh, man, that's some crazy shit. That is some crazy stuff indeed. But the changeling does fall. Severed claw stand in his stead. And now all I really have left, guys, is the soul grinder, which is basically going to die here. It has very little HP. And it uh, looks like Malagor is going to come in. Subutai seeking revenge for earlier. So Malagor the Dark Omen coming in and swooping on the soul grinder. So that bad boy is going to be paying the troll toll. And now the cockatrice is... Now, check this out, guys. This is one of the most MLG plays in the game, okay? Subutai has a lot of good stuff here. Ungors and a Wargore. And normally, you wouldn't expect... You don't know what's coming from the Blue Scribe, but he was not expecting a Traderkin. So what we do here is we had a Traderkin on the Blue Scribes. We let him gather everything, and we overcast a Traderkin. The Beastman's own foul magic against them, and that gets me so many points. It kills the Butchers of Kalkengard, it wrecks all the infantry, it nails Malagor the Dark Omen to the point where he's going to be breaking, and nobody expects it. It was so funny. We were all in Discord, and I was cackling so hard when that happened. Just the most Zeechian cackling you could possibly imagine. But the Cockatrice doing pretty good, up to 1200 value. The Traderkin worked out, and now the Blue Scribe's going to be chasing Malagor off the battlefield, so... We're going to be executing those bad boys off the battlefield here, <laughs> hunting them down. And uh, over on this side, we do get a nice Talent of the Night coming down from, I believe, Yuan Bo. And now Professor Pwn's looking to have the strongest standing army. So what Pwn needs to do is he needs to make sure I don't get more points and just try and become the last person standing. Because in FFA, how it works is the last person standing gets 2,500 points. So I just need to make sure nobody gets within striking distance and kind of scheme behind the scenes to uh, make sure that doesn't happen here. Iron Hill Gunner's on their way in. Big Mama Stank up in the high ground. Oh, the Bear Launcher! The Bear Launcher! Oh, and it missed. It does. That actually does a lot of damage if it can hit, though. And that Bear Launch that Mama Stank has, it has infinite charges. So basically, over the course of a long like land battle, if you were going for a kiting build, you could just spam this all day, and it never runs out of uh, ammunition. But yeah. So Cockatrice is going to be trying to hunt down Mama Stank. She's a chariot character, but she still has 4,600 HP. So we're going to be moving after those bad boys. The Blue Scribes have actually been pretty good this game, uh, sitting at 1,700 value, which isn't bad. They cost 2,200 in multiplayer, which is pretty, pretty wild. Uh, Cockatrice gets in and uh, trying to hit Mama's tank. It does apply some poison. Looks like contact was made. On the low ground, Professor Pwn just chasing the Beastmen scraps, basically, but looks like there was nothing here. The Yuan Bo and the Iron Hill Gunners and a unit of Jade Warrior Halberds are on their way. Hadri still has a respectable Death Star, though. He's got his Patriarchs. He does also have Zargard here and a couple little Groms. 
so yeah, you can see pwn here with the smart play. Using peasant horsemen to just farm incremental value from the little groms is really, really nice for sure. The scribes do use winds of magic. Yeah, so you have to use your winds. Yes. In some games, you can get really good shit. You could get like, you know, healing and spirit leech and, you know, vortexes. But yeah, some games you just get absolute crap. I had games where I got like skitter leap and like, you know, uh, shroud of darkness and just like the worst spells. Dude, Granny is no joke. Granny is sitting at 3,400 value. Mama Stank is not messing around. She's been launching bears all game and just putting in work. Um, yeah, so it's nasty. Pwn moving up with Iron Hill Gunners. Severed Claw are on their way back in. They do have 13 models. Yeah, she launches bears at people. Um, it's, it's like an elemental spirit bear. It's this ability right here. It's the spirit bear. It hits pretty damn hard. I'll try and keep tabs, but that's Mama Stank's normal bombard right there. And it, that, she has like a casket of souls attached to her chariot, which doesn't require any... Um, any sort of uh, angles. It's 360 shooting. So Mama Stank can just be running in circles and dropping fat bombards and causing a lot of havoc for sure. So launching right there. Zargard are hustled up. So we've got double Zargard right here looking to do battle. Professor Pwn's going to be moving in. And now I hope you guys are ready for just a degenerate blob here. It looks like that's going to be Gulias. Man, yeah, Salax Olibi. And uh, that's a huge heal right there. So Pwn's going to be using Talons of the Night. Really, really good cast. That's going to be nailing the Zargard. But guys, Zeech wants points and Zeech is going to be using... The ultimate Zeech army ability on the full health unit of Zargard here. So we're going to be nailing those bad boys down. I saw the blob fight and I was, I was cackling like an evil villain in Discord when this happened. So we nailed those Zargard, did a bunch of damage right there. And I believe the Cockatrice was hunting down scraps. So yeah, right now I'm basically just a vulture. I'm using my Cockatrice and the Blue Scribes to just hunt down little Groms. Uh, next we're going to go for Felix. We're basically just looking for whatever we can. Granny running in circles. Yuan Bo is in here and looking like he wants to party. We do have Jade Warriors making the way in. Looks like there was some sort of a spell. I think it's... Oh, the Bear Launcher! Here it comes! Oh my god, that's so haggard. <laughs> and it did miss barely. That is the jankiest animation. It's like, why does it move like that? Oh my god. <laughs> I love it, man. Yeah, Grandma launching bears, and it's infinite ammo. I mean, Grandma's, like, getting crazy good value. She's currently sitting at 3,700. Because you have to remember, Grandma is still an armor-piercing chariot that has a constant shooting attack. So she's currently, you know, just milking value here. So blue scribes are going for a fight against Felix. Uh, we're duking it out here. You can see their little animation. Cockatrice is going to be descending from the skies, trying to do some work against Felix Jaeger as well. And uh, yeah, he's. we're going to be bashing that bad boy down. Mama Stank coming in, though, protecting Felix. Mama Stank's not a bad fighter. Certainly uh, the blue scribes don't want any piece of grandma, although the cockatrice is going to be hunting down as well. Applying poison, we do manage to make contact with the Stank, and now she's going to be pulling back up and around. I just have to be really careful, because Yuan Bo has execute. He can execute characters, right? So I, I really didn't want him to get my blue scribes, uh, you know, so I was being really, really cautious with that. Really cautious with that. I believe Yuan Bo uses Talents of the Night in dragon form. So when he's in dragon form, he can pop that. So ugly blob fight here on this side. It's going to be Severed Claw doing battle with the uh, Jade Warrior Halberds. And I had, I think, one more spell with the Blue Scribes. I can't remember what it was. There was so much witchcraft going on. Yeah, I think it was a Pit of Shades. So I managed to get Pit of Shades with the Blue Scribes, cast it on top of the Jade Warrior Halberds. It doesn't do that much against the low model count of the Severed Claw. It absolutely wrecks those Jade Warrior Halberds. So overall, the Blue Scribes were able to cackle all the way to the bank there. Now, the Cockatrice basically just flying in circles. I was hunting Mama Stank the entire time, but Mama Stank was putting the moves on me, and she was a... Uh, she was causing some serious havoc. Currently, as we look, uh, she's going to be doing battle with Yuan Bo. I don't know if Yuan Bo already uses Execute. He might have used it earlier in the game. There's only one charge of it, but he does have a basic uh, Execute on his attacks, which you'll be seeing for sure because there's lots of characters and heroes. His Execute ability can only be used on heroes and lords, but his passive Executioner ability, uh, which might only be active when he's in human form, I think, uh, does proc on S uh, single elementals as well. So yeah, they're, they're getting in there. Yeah, the, I don't know if the Pit of Shades got me value or not, but I'm currently sitting at 3.8. Hadri's is a very, very tight second place. So my entire game plan here is to try and take Hadri's out because he's the only one. If Hadri's closes the value gap and is able to do well against Pwn and then he somehow manages to be the last man standing, he could beat me, right? So my entire game plan here was to try and take out Mama Stank and help Professor Pwn be the last man standing because I know his points are really far away from mine. So he's going to have trouble kind of catching up there. Patriarch's getting bashed. Yuan Bo doing his thing. Patriarch's in a little bit of danger, Mama Stank. Dude, Grandma was putting the moves on me all day, just nonstop. It was so annoying. She was just bouncing back and forth. Mama Stank sitting at 4,400 value here, and her bear launcher is probably off cooldown right now, but that cockatrice is uh, going for the kill, certainly hunting down the Grandma. On this side, we got Blue Scribes as well as the Severed Claw doing battle with the War Gore, which is at negative 39, so I was very happy with this. Nice little pick here for the Blue Scribes, so we uh, got some good value farming that War Gore. 
and now can chase them off the battlefield. So the blue scribes are going to pull back and just chase down that war to try and milk what value we can. And Pwn's army's looking pretty scary. So now you see he's an executioner form. So here's the tooltip, executioner. A unit with executioner will execute units in combat below 20% HP. So if a unit is below 20% HP, he just like uh, has a chance of executing them, which is really cool. But yeah, that doesn't apply when he's in dragon form. So there's a chance he could just start bashing single entities, and Mama Stank could be in a little bit of danger as well. So the Cockatrice is going for the... I couldn't catch her. Mama Stank was putting the moves on me super hard. So basically, we just send the Cockatrice after the Little Grom, which is a very easy target. Going to be trying to hunt that bad boy down. Blue Scribes uh, hunting down this uh, Gore here. Orgor is broken, and we're going to be trying to rally the Severed Claw here, and the Blue Scribes hunting. Pwn coming back in with Iron Hill Gunners and some Halberds in the fourth quarter. Certainly a little bit scary. As Cockatrice continues its hunt, its duel of fate, and I think Yonbo just executed one of the Patriarchs. We'll try and keep tabs on that, but yeah, Yonbo sitting at 3,100 values. It's certainly performing quite well indeed. So Cockatrice has landed. I'm going to be doing battle with Mother Ostankia. She keeps juking me. Felix Jaeger is on the run, so I'm going to be discovering that low-hanging fruit. Mama Stank moving in, ramming Yuan Bo. She plays a dangerous game. She's pretty close to 20% HP. If she takes a couple more hits, certainly could get taken down. But uh, looks like, yeah, the Jade Dragon's going to be heading over after Mother Ostankia. Oh, she better be careful. Those are Iron Hill Gunners. That's going to be some last samurai -ing. Oh, they get the shots. They rip it, and her chariot gets in, but she is now... In the danger zone. If Yuanbo comes over, he might have a net. I don't know about the magic situation for Pwn, but if he can net her, she's... Yeah, now you can see she's nearly executable. One more hit and she's going to be in range. If that turns orange, she is going to be in execute range. So she's running away. The range is obviously very close quarters for Yuanbo. Vortex ability going to be going down here from someone. I don't know what that was. Oh, it was a Goulias. Yeah, so Mama Stank, just great value. Really, really good in these long grindy games. Yeah, you better be careful. The Dragon Emperor's uh, Chosen is going to be coming for those kills. Currently, pretty good on points. Hadri's in second. Subutai's last forces have routed off here today. Terracotta Sentinel is looking to be a little bit worse for wear as well. But everything is very low. And now you might see the execute here. So Yuan Bo, I think, is going to come for it. Let's keep tabs. I'm going to try and watch. What happens when he executes is it creates like a Jade Aura. Yep, there it goes. So he attacked the uh, thing and it instantly approxed the execute on that sled when it was below 20%. So Yuan Bo, man, he's getting some work in there. That bad boy got taken down. The bear launcher. Oh my god, here it comes. The bear launcher gets in, does a little bit of damage against the Terracotta Sentinel, I would imagine. Mama Stank currently sitting at probably close to 5,000 value here. Yuan Bo looking to finish off the hag at Terracotta at 1,100. The Cockatrice still flying around, looking to peck and get value wherever I can. Mama Stank's in danger. She's in execute range. If Yuan Bo can hit her, she might be in trouble. Uh-oh, he's coming in for the kill. Is he going to get it? The Emperor's Executioner goes for it, and Mama Stank gets executed, but they're like, oh, look at that! Look, that's so cool! She gets picked up and rescued by, like, a bat, and then disappears. Oh, that is so rad. Man, that animation is so good. That's so good. Oh, man. So Yuan Bo getting some good value. Professor Pwn climbing up in value as he goes and just cleans the game up here. He cleans the game up. Oh, it's Gulyash? It's like Gulyash? Yeah. Okay, thank you. God, I'll, I'll get that right eventually. I'm married to a Slavic woman. I should know, but she's out of town right now, so... You know, it is what it is. So the Cockatrice is going to be... I'm going to be trying here. <laughs> yeah, isn't that funny? She gets away, but you guys ready for old Yuan Bo to execute this thing too? Dude, he's just been the Punisher, man. He is so good. He is so good. I know you didn't get to see too many executes in the Faction War, but pretty much every game I played with him in 1v1s, he's been able to get dank executes. He's going to be a staple for sure. So he gets in and attacks. Uh, you see it doesn't proc every single time. He did hit the Cockatrice and it didn't proc that time. It didn't proc that time either. He might be able to get it with his last attack here, sitting at 637 HP. It's like a percentage chance. The Cockatrice is gonna be fleeing. And uh, yeah, Yuanbo goes dragon form. Basically just gonna be chasing down the scraps here, hunting down the remaining Zargard right there. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be all she wrote, guys. So with that, today's faction war is going to be won by the Great Schemer. Turning into Scarbrand, Zinch is going to be claiming victory today with the victory in the FFA game. So we just barely won that one. Pwn got, ended up getting second place in the FFA. Uh, 14,000 points for me, 12.7 for him after all was said and done. And now let's take a look at the value. So Changeling got 4,000 value. He actually paid for himself, but not by much. The Changeling does cost 3,500, um, which is pretty crazy. Blue Scribes were awesome. I gotta admit, I had a lot of fun with the Blue Scribes. Cockatrice got 21, Soul Grinder was okay. Mutalith Beast held in there and uh, did its job. For Hadri's, I think, had the single most value in the entire game. He had the real, real stank value. Mama Stank got 4,800 value that game, which was obscene. 
launching bears at people, having nonstop AOE healing on like all these SEs is really good. So um, beautiful stuff there. Looking over at Professor Pone's army, Yuan Bo got 4,500. All those executes in the end really, really set him off to another level. 2,500 here and uh, overall was just absolutely nuts. Looking at Subutai's army, his big performer was for sure the monsters, but he kind of got like monster mashed by me pretty hard. Um, Pone is definitely the winner in our hearts. He brought some fun stuff for us today as well. So if you guys enjoyed the faction war, please do drop a like. But before it ends, I'm going to show you guys the changeling and uh, we can go over some stuff here. So here was today's faction war. Once again, those were the final results and uh, we are going to go look at the changeling. So I have another, I have a whole video coming out on this, but I'll just give you guys my rant real quick. So you look at the changeling, okay? He has, um, where's Zinch? There you are. Okay. So the changeling is 4,800 value. Simon, thank you for the 40 bucks. I'm really, I'm glad you guys enjoyed the, the stream. It was fun. I had a great time here. Hargeneth executioners do not have that ability, but it'd be really cool if they did. Yeah, so you go to the blue scribe, or the changeling, and you pick a lord, okay? So you notice how he costs 5,000. That was Creative Assembly's attempt to bounce him for multiplayer, but it's just like, it doesn't work. Because the only thing that's worth bringing, really, in a competitive sense, is going to be Kugat, Scarbrand, and uh, Bellacore. But even all of those are like fringe picks, right? So let's say you go with Sigwald, okay? Then you're paying... 4,800 gold, at the minimum 3,500 to turn into Sigvald, who costs 1,200 gold. It's terrible. Uh, the prices for the Blue Scribe should be scaling. It should You should take the price of that Lord at their full kit and add a couple hundred gold to it. And that should be how the Changeling works. Maybe like a 500 gold premium, okay? So if I wanted to turn into Sigvald, let's take a look at Sigvald, uh, or we could look at Grimgore, okay? If I want to turn into Grimgore, I would be paying 2,900 gold because his base kit... Uh, maybe you could subtract the cost of their items since the changeling doesn't get items. So let's say we look at Grimgore, uh, we cut his two items. So 2000 plus 500, but he gets all the abilities no matter what. So maybe you do something like that because as it currently stands, he's just, it's like the only thing you can use him for, the changeling is competitive if you turn him into Kugath. Because what you do is you get Kugath for 3500 and you get every Kugath item and ability or every Kugath ability and spell. So then you get Lore of Nurgle. You know what I'm saying? How do you feel about the Blue Scribes in multiplayer? They're a meme unit, but they're very fun. I don't mind having some units that aren't like the best as long as they're fun. The Changeling just isn't even that fun in most games. In FFA, he's fun because it's super casual, but in 1v1, you're just setting yourself back super hard, right? You're setting yourself back super hard. Um, the Blue Scribes here, uh, they cost 2,400. You have no choice. And how it works is, let me show you what this looks like firsthand, okay? So we're going to load into this game here and uh, I'll show you what the Blue Scribes looks like. Yeah, so like I would say like a lord plus five hundred gold, and no, and the cost of items not included, um, and then you get to you get to choose if you want to bring their mount or not. I, I don't know. I feel like the changeling could conjure a phantasmal image of Deathclaw and ride it around, right? It's just the uh, you know, the changeling is really poorly implemented. Everything else is cool, honestly. This this DLC overall is is uh, I like it for multiplayer. I, I can't speak to campaign because I don't really care too much about campaign or play it. Um, I haven't even played the campaigns. I've just been hitting multiplayer, but. Check it out. The bear, all the Kislev units are good. Everything Kislev got is good. Cathay got the Jade Lions, which suck. Um, Crow men are really good, and the drum is niche, but decent. So this is how the Blue Scribes work. You get a bunch of random spells, okay? And then we're going to go ahead and cast, uh, let's say, Word of Pain. No, we'll just do the Ninja Stars, right? So we pop it on Grimgore, and then it shuffles it and gives you all new spells. So now we have uh, Stone Ground Stance, Infernal Gateway, Soul Stealer, which is awesome. Flames of Asgore, Invocation, Net. So then we can cast a Net on Grimgore, and boom. It, it flexes our spells and changes it up. So now we have uh, a bunch of new spells. Yeah, and I think we got Net again. Did we? Oh, we got Net twice in a row. That's pretty funny. Yeah, look at that. We got Fleshy Abundance. We got Fleshy Abundance right there. Um, yeah, so now we have Fleshy. So we could heal our, our Zinch characters with Nurgle Magic, right? Yeah, so that's pretty, that's pretty funny. Okay, so you see how he works. It's really fun. It's really, really fun. Um, I, you could still win games with Scribes in competitive, though. It, it's a little bit of a setback, a little RNG, but like you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. If I were to go Blue Scribes, I would probably go Changeling and turn him into like Scarbrand and then have this thing be my caster. It's fun. It's really fun to use. And in campaign, it's going to be a blast. Now, the only place that the Changeling is going to be good is doing this. All right, so he's going to go with... Um, he is going to go with... Um, he's going to go here... And he's going to go here. So this is a pretty disgusting combo. 
anyone who doesn't have melee is going to suffer, okay? So let's just get like homeboy in here. So factions that have bad ranged are gonna suffer this. So we're even gonna throw in some anti-large guys, some black orcs. Uh, we can throw in some goblins, whatever, some, some pigs. All right. And uh, yeah, that looks fine. All right. Anything change for Demons of Chaos? No, Demons of Chaos will be fine. Yeah, Demons of Chaos will be fine. The Scribes are fun. They're not competitive, but you can still win. I could see a really good player winning with them. Yeah. They're just they're just a fun unit. And that's, you know, they don't have to be super good. They could use the cost reduction. You could take like 300 gold off them and maybe call it, call it a day. What's the single best unit in the DLC? Um, hmm, that's a hard one. For me, I might say the... Oh man, it's, it's between the... Th like, if we're talking not lords, just units, it might be the Zangor or the things in the woods or the Elemental Incarnate or Mutalith Beast. Uh, they're honestly all really good at different things. So here's what's going to happen in land battle, okay? Let's say you're playing Corn or a faction that doesn't have good ranged, and this is going to happen in Dom as well, but it's not going to be as bad because you can avoid it with objectives. But you're going to get this happening, okay? So Kugath is now on the Zeech roster. You get all of his spells, including Fleshy, and you get Double Mortis, okay? It's his time. Yeah, we're going to have a bounty for the Scribes. It's going to be really fun. So Kugath is like super polarizing in a lot of matchups. The only reason he's not OP is because he's on the Nurgle roster. But look at this. Okay, so we're going to go slow-mo. I want to show you something. There's two more Descension effects. You have Pestilent Decay and the Aura of Mutation being applied. So double Mortis Engine with AoE healing. It is going to be just pure foulness. Absolute pure foulness. So you could just grind here. And if you get in any danger, I'm going to show you what happens, right? So you get like all these nice debuffs. You can summon Nurglings. You can do this and just keep going, and you have double mortis. It's gonna be really nasty. And even if your opponent has ranged and they can shoot your Mutalith Beast, you can overcast Fleshy Abundance to heal him, right? And like melee factions are just gonna suffer so goddamn hard against this. But in Dom, it's not as much of a problem because if you see this in Dom, you can win easily by just playing the other two objectives. Be like, all right, screw you, dude. I'm just gonna go to the other two objectives. Just make sure you don't play like a lane map against each if you're a melee faction, because then you won't have too many ways of winning. But in Dom, you can just play the other two objectives, okay? So now you're like, oh, okay, the battle's, you know, looking a little bit wild. So you just pull Homeboy in, and you overcast Fleshy, and you just get a fat heal, okay? Yeah, good luck, Vampire Counts. Vampire Counts can't do shit against this. You're just going to get wrecked. So now, look, they're both full health again because of Kugath's healing. So applying Nurgle healing is just nuts. It's just absolutely nuts. And uh, we can just drop this for fun. Yeah, ha Kugath is really polarizing. Like, Vampire Counts in land battle... I legit don't think it's going to be possible for equally skilled and equally skilled players for Vampire Counts to beat Zinch in land battle. I just don't. They're just going to have Kugath, a Mutalith Beast. They're going to have Aeocold, Severed Claw. They're just going to sit in a box and just mouth breathe. And there's like, what the hell can you do? You know? 3,500 for Kugath is not a bad deal, though, because of what it does for your roster. And also, it's not a huge difference in terms of uh, the actual cost of Kugath, okay? So 3,500 here. I can say this as a Nurgle player. I would pay the premium to get Kugath on Zinch if I were in that kind of a matchup in land battle. Um, so Kugath, how I usually play him in tournaments is I cut here. I might go, if I'm going single entity focused, I'll go Rancid and Fleshy. And then I will cut usually Children of Nurgle because you're not spamming spells. Uh, I would cut maybe these and maybe keep that. So you're paying a 500 your land battles don't allow uh, double mortis. That's good. So that'll save tournaments. But um, as far as um, like ladder goes, it's going to suck. But yeah, you, you you would pay like a five six hundred gold premium. You know, and sometimes I do bring virulent contagion as well. So you're only you're not paying that much of a premium for Kuga. So it's pretty good. All right, guys. Anyways, so hopefully you enjoyed that. It's quite a bit of fun. Yeah, well, how does, but how is the, the how are the rules going to work for double mortis? Are you just going to say the changeling, because the changeling isn't a mortis engine, but when he turns into one, does it count as one? Is it like a transformation in the rules? Yeah. So my suggestion for him is to have his cost be scaling. So the changeling, when he turns into things, um, when he turns into different characters, you, you take the cost of the character without items and you add 500 gold, okay? The other thing you do from there is you... Um, you uh you make the transformations temporary. So maybe they're two minutes long. And then he has to turn back to Zinch form. Because it'd be cool if the changeling actually had a moment of weakness where he was like snipeable and weak, you know, in his changeling form. Because right now it's just kind of, I don't know, not the best. All right, guys, you guys rock, man. Today's stream was really fun. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And um, we're going to be back with more goodness soon. So these are the final standings for today. Uh, Zinch ended up winning. We won with uh, the FFA victory, but uh, it was a three-way tie going into the grand final. So we ended up having a tiebreaker there. So 
All right. Take care of yourselves. We appreciate you all. It's going to be it for tonight. And uh, yeah, fun stuff. We got to showcase most of the new units today. I'll be slapping up replays to showcase other stuff. So you guys will get to see a pretty complete picture of all the goodies. So, um, so yeah, that's it. Take care, my friends. Hopefully you enjoyed the goodness. And uh, I'll be back maybe tomorrow with the stream. I'm not sure. I got to check some things. But we would be going over all the new units. I'll do like a very methodical review of all the units, giving you my opinions on their competitive viability. And I'll also um, play some battles at the end, maybe. It depends on who's available. So, all right, guys. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you on the other side. That's it for today. And Sigmar bless this ravaged body. That's going to be all. Take care. And thank you guys for your donations and uh, support as always.